Well, welcome. Good evening uh, to the Northampton City Council meeting of September 5th, 2013. I'm City Council President Bill Dway. And Council Murphy has a droid. Uh, thank you uh, for tuning in or coming in tonight. Uh, we'll start with the public comment section, uh, section of, the, of the meeting. And uh, let me lay out the rules for you where we invite you to speak. You can speak on any topic. Uh, stay under th three minutes or under. Um, know that according to the council <coughs> rules that the counselors cannot interact. They can't answer questions. So essentially whatever question you pose will be rhetorical. We ask that you stay within the three minute uh, limit. If you go over, please be, f you know, if you find yourself ending a sentence, fine. If you want to start another page or another paragraph, please do not. And if I ask you to stop and you continue, we'll eventually say we'll call the meeting a recess and wait until you quit the chambers. And and the police have just shown up, so <laughs> <laughs> I've got backup. <laughs> um, so we'll start. And when you step up, please uh, state your name and your address uh, into the microphone for the public record. Uh, first up is Patricia Healy. My name is Patricia Healy, and I live at 21 Longfellow Drive in Florence, and I'm in Ward 6B. And um, thank you, uh, Mayor Narkowitz and um, members of the council for allowing me to speak. Tomorrow, union members from across the valley will be breaking bread um, with the, um, all the members of the Pioneer Valley Central Labor Council. We have an annual labor breakfast. And at that breakfast, we, um, we celebrate victories, and we also we mourn the deaths of workers across the state um, who have died on the job. Um, so we take our, uh, our work very seriously, and when we have our celebrations, they're very, you know, we only have them two or three times a year, but they're very important to us, and that's when we also network and share a lot of information about what's going on in our communities, since we're all, you know, living and working in our communities as well as being union members. I'm a member of the Massachusetts Nurses Association, and I live here in Northampton, obviously. And I wanted to, thinking about tomorrow, I decided I wanted to really come in and um, thank the members of the council and um, Mayor Narkowitz for coming to, reaching an agreement with the firefighters. And I, I have to admit, as a, as a uh, um, you know, citizen here, I, I really didn't realize how long these firefighters were fighting for, for a contract until I really listened to um, you know, all the comments at, a, at an earlier meeting. But Maureen Carney and, and um, uh, Bill Dwight spent time um, explaining things to me, a lot of time, um, you know, explaining why the first vote went the way it did. Um, thanks, um, Owen, Maureen, and um, Bill for, uh, for your vote for labor. Um, but I, I have to say that Marianne Labarge is my city councilor, and she spent an enormous amount of time with me and some others um, explaining her decision um, with the first vote about not funding the contract. And, and um, she went over the budget in great detail. She talked about her constituents, and I've met some of the constituents who are really concerned about both the override and the firefighter contract. And um, I have a greater appreciation for the difficulty of your job as decision makers uh, when you're weighing, balancing uh, all the needs of you know the people who work for the city and the people who live in the city. And, and um, I, re I really just feel like I re wanted to say that I appreciate it. I think a lot of us do. And I, I especially, you know, Marianne spent like an enormous amount of time on the budget with me <laughs> explaining it to me. And I really thank you, uh, Marianne. But thanks to everybody. And I, you know, your wisdom was especially noticed, I think, Mayor Narkowitz in meeting and settling that contract so quickly. I mean, it really had a great skill there to be able to, to do that and, and, and hear their needs. and and um, you know, come to a, a very happy conclusion for everyone. So thanks. Thank you very much. Barbara Rokoska, please. I'm Barbara Rokoska of Florence Road, and I'm a resident of Ward 6, and I'm here to let everyone know in Ward 6 that there is a primary election on September 17th at Ryan Road School from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, to whittle down the people running for Ward 6 City Councilor. And I really want everyone to get out there and vote. No matter how you're voting, we need your votes. Please get out and vote. It's very important. 
exercise your rights. That's what I want the public to know to do. And also, I'm very happy about the firefighters. I'm on the negotiating team with the school department. And I know how difficult it is to come to decisions. And we've had lengthy negotiations. So I'm really happy that everyone agreed on this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Adele Franks, please. My name is Adele Franks. I live in Florence. And I'm here as a representative of Grow Food Northampton, uh, whose mission is to increase food security in our area through sustainable agriculture. And as such, we are very committed to the permanent protection of farmland in our city. And we'd really like ultimately to see all of our remaining 2,500 acres of farmland be permanently protected. And we wanted to uh, voice our appreciation for the proactive approach <coughs> that the city has been taking in protecting farmland. And in particular, tonight on your agenda, you have uh, an authorization of a an APR on a small piece in the Meadows section of Northampton, which we would like to vigorously support. It's a small piece, but every piece counts. And the more pieces that become permanently protected, the more other landowners can see the uh, benefits of permanently protecting their land. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Patrick Bowen, please. That stack looks really thick. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Patrick Bowen. I'm at 95 Straw Avenue in Florence. Stack of papers I hand this look really thick, but it has a summary document on the front, and the rest of it is just if you're interested. So I wanted to talk to the council tonight about the second reading of the mobile food ordinance that's up for a vote tonight, and ask the council to either defer action on that ordinance, or if it does pass it tonight, to look into a supplemental ordinance that was discussed a little bit at the last meeting to make kind of a bigger picture about integrating both mobile food, mobile food vehicles and the traditional businesses and so that both can thrive. Um, from looking at other jurisdictions, I've seen that you can have both kinds of businesses be successful. Um, some, of the, some of the things I found from looking at places across the country is that you can have mobile food businesses operating in the central business district, either in here or in Florence, and put, instead of an outright van, have like 100 feet between the restaurant and the mobile food vehicle and not have food trucks sa selling the same products as the restaurants that are in town, or at least not the ones that are immediately adjacent to. Um, you can limit the number of trucks within a zone as opposed to an outright ban. Also, you can allow clusters of food trucks at different locations, kind of like in the idea of Tuesday markets, but uh, or the other farmers markets that we have around town, or food trucks instead. Or you can also charge an additional fee per day or per hour for where the food trucks are parked so that there's more, the city's getting more back in terms of revenue and also going towards things in the community. But the trucks still have a chance to thrive where the customers actually are. Um, the, the council should take this action because it's good for the economy. Counter the belief that food trucks hurt local businesses is actually shown in a lot of cities that they drive more customers into the downtown, downtown area because they use social media to draw more people in as opposed to just passerby is coming on the street. So I was thinking that tonight, as the council also takes its second reading on the new zoning rules, which are designed to create opportunities for more affordable housing within Northampton, that it shouldn't take an opposite ac action within the business communities. But food trucks are an incubator for new businesses. It's a way for people who don't have the capital but are interest, interested in the restaurant business or for, in the downturn, a lot of chefs who lost their primary business came back and started a new business through food trucks because of the lower capital costs. In addition, it also gives opportunities for existing restaurants in town to go into new ventures without having to risk quite as much in their upfront costs. So I ask that the council review the materials I've given to you tonight if you have time and to consider a bigger picture of integrating in both kinds of businesses. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, is it Joseph Collette? Cadet. Cadet, I'm sorry. That's fine. East Street. 
going for it. Uh, good evening. Um, seems like a hard way to ask several questions and not be able to converse back with answers because your answers may prompt other questions. Um, I was not able to attend the last meeting but heard quite a bit about the zoning changes and I'm extremely concerned about the changes which affect the Smith College Lyman's Estate property. Um, I've also heard, and I don't like scuttle to hear to use the term scuttlebutt. It's really another term for hearsay, but that the city's been interested in that property. I'm, I'm interested in knowing if there's any truth in that, and also that primarily that I've heard it said, Mr. Dwight, that you said that's a done deal. It's been done for six years. Um, if that's the case, I'm a conscious. I, pretty astute person and I haven't heard anything about that uh, whether I've been to meet all the meetings or not I've been to a few but uh, that concerns me that that processes may be moving along that the residents are told well they'll have a they'll be informed but that doesn't say a whole lot or, or leave a lot of people feeling comfortable about what can or can't happen or what they can or can't do um, there's so many questions I'm not sure I could form them all in three minutes other than uh, to say that it doesn't sound like everything has been up front that there's been a lot of things that have been partially decided maybe this is assumption but I'm hearing this from others and I've heard you had the forum that Bill uh, Newman held something to the effect that these things were decided a while back is it also true that there was a law change that said that a butters no longer have to be notified is, and, and I really want to know that. There's probably a plethora of other questions again, but too many to recount in one time, and, and it would be more of a back and forth uh, conversation that would be required for that. So I'll just leave it at that. Thank you. If, uh, if it's any consolation, that you, you may talk with any of us, of course, at any other time. This is the one time of any given day that you're not allowed to. So that mm, I see. The, 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 the well, but I mean, I feel this is the most important forum because we're all here. And, and I mean, sometimes you miss information from one that, well, you have to go to this one for that. And I don't think it's as effective as that. And uh, maybe I'm wrong, and maybe we need some changes on the way questions and answer sessions are done. But that's probably for another time as well. So I thank you, and I appreciate that information. Thank you. Uh, Robert Nagel, please. Mr. President, Your Honor, thank you for your time. Uh, like my friend Joseph Cadet there, I'm also concerned about the, uh, as he said, the lack of, uh, better word, scuttlebutt about what's going on in our ward concerning the potential of 100 homes going in the Lyman Estate. Now, uh, we don't know if that's true or not. We just hear it from here and from there. And we understand that there's been a numerous uh, zoning changes in the city. In the past, what, a couple of weeks or a couple of months? I'm not sure exactly. But uh, that's basically it. You know. My other concern, too, if, if there is another, another 100 homes put in, how would we pay for the, um, the civil service aspect of that? Through taxes, I, I, I assume? or another override, which is more likely. Thank you. Thank you very much. You. That's all we have signed up for. If anyone else is interested in speaking, you're welcome to. Um, is that it? Oh, sure. State your name and address. My name is Barbara Kirkshank. I live at 52 Olive Street, and I'm here once again to thank you for your vote last time around and um, hoping that you'll vote tonight to um, confirm the zoning changes. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, I'm going to ask the clerk to call the roll. We're going to convene <coughs> the regular session of the meeting. Councilor Adams? Here. Councilor Carney? Present. Councilor White? Here. Councilor Kramer Daniels? Here. Councilor Barnes? Present. Councilor Murphy? Here. Councilor Schwartz? I'm sorry. Councilor Here. Councilor Here. Council Schwartz is excused. It's Rosh Hashanah. It is a holiday, and she's, she's not. Sorry. And actually, I'm drinking. I apologize for the fact that we're convening on Rosh Hashanah. This is a scheduling oversight that um, we'll work to reconcile in the future. 
Um, this is a petition from the National Grid. Uh, we have a hearing scheduled at 7.05, but uh, is there, this is, we'll tweak after that. It's a public hearing. This is the installation of underground <coughs> facilities, National Grid petition number 14632933 on Masonic Street in Northampton. And the petitioner is here. Yes, Lisa Jasinski with National Grid. Um, the petition is simply for the relocation of a pool to allow the entrance for the new car dealerships on King Street. It's pool number 68. It's where the, I'm this sorry. Is, uh, Masonic, this is the Masonic. I apologize. Petition. That's okay. <laughs> there are two of them, right? There are two of them, yeah. Masonic Street, this was for the installation of an underground primary that would be going from a transformer at the telephone building on Masonic Street across Masonic to serve new homes or a new home going up, an existing home that's there, and also provide um, the option for other buildings that are served off of that area from the same transformer. Any questions of the petitioner? Councilor Tacey? Yep. You got a three-phase, but how much or how much three-phase power is, is used in the city? right now is there, I mean what is some of the equipment that that people are using three phase power for uh, left I mean it's just a question elevators typical motors depending yep. on how large you know they're running yep. just a cheaper form of like this for a bigger motor it is okay and but how much more I couldn't I couldn't tell you off yeah. the top of my head I was just curious I just I know it was always something that we used 30 or 40 years ago for a milling machine and things, okay. Um, so it was a little different back then also. Yes, it was, it was. Um, <coughs> and I am, uh, and I always I support most everything that National Grid does. I have a question um, before I would go ahead with this. I did some work on North Maple Street with poles, mm -hmm. and there's double poles all over the place still standing, and there's still wires mm -hmm. attached that I understand do not belong to National Grid. Well, uh, the, the, the truth of the matter is uh, most of the poles belong to uh, Verizon and National Grid. We both have different maintenance areas. Um, for, in Northampton, it is split. We, we maintain one side of Route 9. They maintain the other side of Route yeah. 9. There are a lot of double poles right now, and um, I've had actually many discussions with this because I'm on North Maple Street, and I have a double pole in front of my house. And we're having some trouble um, finding the people responsible for transferring these fiber optic cables that belong, one of which is the city, and that's actually on the pole outside my house. Um, there's a number of poles that I actually started compiling a list so I can uh, figure out who we can deliver to the city and say, get some kind of a timeline about getting that fiber optic. It's the one that runs from school to school, and I believe it's police station. Fiber optic loop. I, I'm a little concerned because we're a little off the posted agenda of the of the discussion. So okay. you're, you're doing fine. Yes. And it, yeah. it, it, but sometimes we base what we approve for an National Grid to do on on, on past performers. I just kind of I wanted to clear up that it was not National Grid that right. is responsible for this hanging operation that is still ongoing. So Councilor Sullivan used to, uh, when I was first elected used to is. He felt it was his personal charge to eliminate every dead soldier mm -hmm. pole in, in town. Yep. Apparently, it didn't take all that much. But in any event, um, in that context, it's appropriate. But uh, um, there to hold up. I don't mean to hold up National Grid. No, it's something that maybe the city of Northampton is dragging its feet on, or is not doing something that they should have been doing. Well, so. I I think that um, um, it's a I. From what I understand, as a matter of fact, I just had a discussion about this. This is, um, I think that there's been some communication, but it, it hasn't taken place as of yet. I'd have to get back to you on that as to. And the fiber optic loop is not part of the, the issue here on Masonic Street, correct? No, it is not. Yeah. There is, are there any opponents to the proposal from National Grid here to speak? Yes, ma'am? I'm not sure whether I'm going to. Well, step on up. You're, you you can just identify yourself. You don't have to identify yourself as an opponent. You just identify yourself and, and, and tell us your concerns. I just got a card in the mail that said notice to abutters, and I think this is for the 1463293 And I'm trying to figure out 
if it's going to impact the property on State Street. It, what's your name, ma'am? Uh, Diana Randall. Diana Randall, on, and you live on State Street? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, well, then. Yes, it should not impact it. There is there is a area uh, that we notify, and it's usually a 300-foot radius. So anybody whose property touches that 300-foot radius of the <coughs> location that we're working at is notified. So do you have a map that actually shows where? Um, the I actually I apologize. I have my map for King Street. I forgot about Masonic Street. Um, okay. But it is. Here. You know where the phone building is. Here we go. Can we get, can we get a? Call? You know where the Woodstock Cafe right is. So she, Lisa, Thank you right very much. It's right here. Don't, hey. don't give her that one. So. Hey. Well, this is the official. Don't yet. give that away. <laughs> we'll be in trouble. So uh, this is the Woodstock Cafe. <clears throat> Bella Restaurant is on the other side of this little alleyway. So if you're come up, coming up Center Street, right? Okay. Let me see where I'm. So Woodstar and then Bella, and it's coming. This is the phone building. It's coming just straight across, just under this little section of the street. Okay. So I'm not actually in a butter up for this section. You're just right, but we do <clears throat> notify you. Okay. So you're neither in a butter nor an opponent. <laughs> Don't get me in trouble like that. <laughs> um, are there any other questions then? Uh, I would move approval. Well, come yeah, I was just going to say, I viewed the site, I visited the site. It doesn't appear to be anything in the way or it's not going to affect any um, anything on the ground. So I would move to approve. Second. <coughs> to made and seconded. Uh, uh, this is a close the hearing. Thank you. That's a close the hearing. All those in favor of closing the hearing, please say aye. 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 Okay, I'm set the motion for approval. So move to approve. Second. All those in favor of approval. Aye. 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 Thanks. That's one. Now, down the road. Well, that I thought we were on. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. That's fine. Uh, this is um, uh, we're over in the hearing. This is for uh, poll petition, national grid petition, one five four six one two zero eight. And this is on King Street, Northampton, and the proponent is here. Yes. So this pool is a relocation. It's moving at about 30 feet, I think it would be south of its ex existing location, and that is to allow for the entrance to be built into the new car dealerships going up on King Street. I think it's 347, right around that area. We're moving it from uh, its current place at the end of Barrett, uh, to uh, the end of Barrett? Uh, towards Barrett Street, yeah. in the 30 feet to in the direction of, of south. Barrett Street. Yeah, 30 feet south. Questions? Are there any opponents or butters or people with questions? Move to close the hearing. Okay. Motions are made to close the hearing. All those in favor? Please aye. Say aye. 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 I'll accept a motion for approval. Move, Move to, to approve. approve. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. And uh, I'll follow up on the Thank cable. You. In touch with that. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, actually, any communications from the mayor? This is no. A nice vacation. So. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> any pictures for anyone? <laughs> no, no slides. Take all right. Facebook. Oh, saw slide show. Yeah, go to his Facebook page. You can see all the pictures that. Uh... <laughs> um, this is the second reading on the resolution for on fossil fuel divestment. Um. I'm wave, wave reading. Wave reading. Okay. I'll uh, accept a motion. Put it on. Move to approve. Second. Any further discussion on this resolution? Councilor Tays. Yeah. yeah. I, um, I actually spoke at length with George Zimmerman, and um, also the Department of Revenue, and there's a lot of a lot of uh, things in here. Our investment and our return on investment. And I'm just wondering how it will affect. We all know that we have to have a fully funded retirement system, and it was supposed to be 2028. Market crashed. We moved it up eight years. We put just under four million dollars into our retirement out of our general fund, our contribution, an additional 243 thousand dollars yearly. And who knows? Maybe the economy will get better. Maybe our return on investment will get up above 100 thousand dollars. But I'm I'm curious as to how this will affect it. I just and nobody's really. I haven't really gotten anybody to. Oh. Uh, Councilor Spector and Councilor. Well, it's interesting because I, I talked to the treasurer as well a while back, and he said we have very little invested in 
fossil fuel and that that we have. There are other investments that have returned uh, just as strongly. So it's always, as you're saying, it's always a gamble what you invest in. We could see a crash in the fuel market as well. So who knows? So um, his, his reading was uh, we just, you know, we could do this. And, and again, as you say, it's a gamble, but it's a gamble no matter what you invest in these days. And all that's the finance director's smile and nod, but what's our, I think our exposure is like 3% or something like that is very, very small. Yeah, um, I know. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're debating the resolution. <laughs> I think it's very small. We're just, it's, yeah, there's a state law that keeps us kind of conservative investors, but. I, I spoke with George Zimmerman today, and he said there's about 3% of the trust funds that the city administers in mutual funds that might have a very small piece of a fossil fuel component to it. None of the city's funds, aside from the trust funds, are invested in anything with fossil fuels. So it's 3% of our trust funds, but if you take it as a whole of the city's investments, it's 0.03. So it's a very, very small amount. And there are other investment models that can, you know, other mutual funds that are socially responsible that they, money can be moved to eventually. Thank you. And I also spoke, I spoke to the Department of Revenue, too. And um, I, this council doesn't have any authority to direct the treasurer to do any type of investment, does it? No. no. I, I believe there's no authority that this does I could just say that when, when the original, I, I know we were clear, the treasurer was clear that the resolution does not say directs the treasurer to do anything. I'm yes. fairly certain the language doesn't say that. Well, I saw it says urge. It urges, yeah. The resolution. But you're correct. It's not, uh, this isn't an ordinance, and, um, and I'm a sponsor of it, and I feel comfortable that it's a direction. It's a policy. It's setting a policy goal for the city, and we're also trying to encourage the state uh, to also adopt that same policy as well. So I just didn't want anybody to get in the public to get the impression that we were trying to direct the treasurer to do anything because the DOR doesn't even allow for that. And and I would have something to say about that as well okay. um, as the mayor. So the charter actually says something about that. Yeah. Okay. Councilor Freeman. Uh, yeah, I would just say that um, it's it's my um, it's part of my other life to um, direct investments for clients and uh, there is. Um, there are two schools of thought, but in theory, there should be no um, downside uh, as far as return goes to uh, in socially conscious investing or investment, investment that merely excludes fossil fuels uh, or other uh, forms of energy or other or any other form of uh, of uh, of um, interest. Um, as long as the uh, pool of remaining investments uh, is sufficiently diverse. Uh, that's a theoretical perspective. Now, many people think, well, if you, don't, if you can't pick some of the best performers, you, you maybe your, your performance suffers. But uh, there is a long track record of uh, mutual funds and money managers who manage money in a socially conscious way who uh, perform just as well, if not better, than uh, um, money managers that uh, run the full gamut of, of all kinds of investments. And I understand too, it just, but it also goes on to say directly or indirectly. It's pretty hard to track indirect. You in invest in one like the Sun Company is owned by the Sun Oil Company. And it just so, and they're a solar company. So I just throw it out that it's pretty difficult to pick an investment that might not be somehow indirectly tied to fossil fuel. So as long as everybody's aware of that, and um, if you really don't think it's going to bother our return on investment, uh, that the, the taxpayers would have to, would lose out on and maybe have to pick up the tab for at the end, so be it. So just to reiterate, yep. um, the, the theory is that if, the, the theory is that any, any company is going to, any company, whether it's in the energy business or in the, in the, the coal business or oil business, it'll return a certain amount and, and those that don't will also return a certain amount and as long as um, there is sufficient uh, there are sufficient assets to pick from that don't that aren't involved in fossil fuels then the this this um, the city and uh, other investors should have no difficulty finding market rate returns or, or above or below given their risk tolerance 
And this, you know, the city has, as uh, the president alluded to, the city has um, a lot of restrictions regarding its, the risks that it can take with public funds and with pension funds. Um, the pension target rate of return is, is a, f a little bit above 8%. It's not double digits um, over the long term, so uh, it's it's difficult, but uh, certainly very doable to um, limit your investment choices and still return that. My opinion. And I'll remind everyone this is a resolution, not an order. Uh, Your Honor, I just wanted to add because we're kind of mixing the retirement and and what George Zimmerman. Um, our retirement funds are already in a socially responsible fund. Account. So just one, because I know right. sometimes we're conflating what George is doing and what the retirement board is doing. So that's an important decision. I was going to bring. And it is a resolution. It's not an order. And in fact, actually, as we said over and over, the point of the resolution is to express a commitment of the community to an objective and a goal. And um, it carries more weight, perhaps symbolically, than it does. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're bringing the oil companies to their knees, but the president called for the divestment, and I think it's appropriate to encourage other communities and institutions to divest of oil interests to because their incentive is profit motive, and if their profit's impacted by investment, then their conscience, such as it is, might happen to follow how that goes. So we, we have no illusions about how great our impact is. Our impact would hopefully be cumulative. And looking so, we're actually jumping on a bandwagon instead of starting one as we're often, we've, we've started our own bandwagons here in the past, but we're jumping on this one. And uh, I would hold up uh, the end of apartheid government in South Africa as a very good example of what happens when divestment becomes um, manifest. So. In, just in, in to what the mayor just said, it does, on the back, it talks all about the city's retirement and the city treasurer and the investment. So it tied it all together in several paragraphs here. Um, so it just became kind of confusing. Um, what's the is it dirty fuel? Is it fracking? Is it coal? Or is there any is there any distinction? So anyway, I uh, I'll support it as I'll I'll feel good about supporting it, but um, I hope uh, it doesn't have any negative impact on our return on investment, which right now really Excellent. stinks. Well, think, Thank you. I think we can all safely say that we vote and hope that we don't have a negative impact on anything. So the, um, would, is there a preference for a roll call or? Yes, please. Uh, roll call, please. Yes. 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 Aye. Yes. Abstain. Aye. Thank you. Abstain. Okay. So that's passed in second reading and the resolution stands. Um there's one minute announcement. So the councilors have any anything to share? Councilor Adams? I have two. Um one, this month is National Senior Center Month and to celebrate our senior center on Conn Street Community Center is having an open house on September 15th from 1 to 3 p.m. And this is an opportunity for people to take tours, meet staff. There's also going to be entertainment and light refreshments. So hopefully everybody can make that. And the other thing is Saturday, this Saturday, September 7th, is the third annual Northampton Jazz Festival. Um, the outdoor component will be Saturday from 11 to 9, and that's free and open to the public. And we have a great lineup this year. I'm on the board. And um, there are really some terrific jazz musicians, including the legendary Al Foster. So I'd like to invite the community to that. Thank you. Where, where is it? Good point. Where is it? It's behind Thorns in the middle of the lot. <coughs> right. <laughs> well, I, wanted to, oh. yeah, I just wanted to thank um, uh, the Cooper family in Cooper's Corner for uh, hosting the WHMP today for the Bike for Food. Um, we all know this is the hunger month and we're orange i didn't get the memo so uh but i just wanted to thank the cooper family uh for hosting that uh whmp and bob flaherty and his crew thank you and uh, i want to remind everybody that on sunday the 15th the great
Florence Chicken Barbecue is taking place at the Florence Civic and Business. It's a chance to have a sighting of our state rep, Peter Kokot, cooking chicken. And sometimes the mayor even joins them. I don't know if the mayor's coming this time, are you? Yes. Okay, so you can come up and have barbecued chicken courtesy of the mayor and our state representative, Peter Kokot. And a lot of people go there, for those of you that are campaigning. Place to be, Florence. <laughs> uh, chicken. Tickets are like twelve fifty, and they're uh, available um, at various locations and businesses in Florence. So please come. It's a great time. Sometimes even the Florence Community Band plays. There's live entertainment. So come to Florence on the 15th and have some chicken. Councilor Tate. Yes, Peter Colcott will be there this year. I had to fill in for him last year, and I will be happy to have him take over the tongs <laughs> so as I can do more talking. Thank you. <laughs> Councilor um, before everyone uh, goes to Jazz Fest on Saturday, come downtown for the Chalk Art Festival that's on Friday. Uh, the drawing, the actual drawing of the sidewalks will take place from 8 to 4, uh, after which time they'll be ready for presentation. People can Please. walk around downtown and uh, look at the chalk art on the, on the sidewalks, and uh, there will be a uh, juried prizes, uh, 250 150 100 dollars This is real money we're talking about here. Uh, presented at the steps of City Hall at five. Best of two pieces of chalk at two hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah. Chalk, chicken, and jazz. <coughs> Very eclectic town. Um, uh, any other? Any one other announcements? No. Okay. Um, and this is what's the procedure here? Present. This is a notice of. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, of proposed acquisition of the MDR Agricultural Preservation Restriction, the APR, referred to project name Marsha Russell on uh, project ID number is 13D05. You have it handy. Um, and what are we doing here, Mary? That's it? Mm -hmm. All right, okay. That was easy. Okay. Presentations. Right now, uh, here with us today, um, we have uh, a public safety presentation. This is on uh, 2013 pedestrian, bicycle, and moped type safety enforcement grant. Uh, Michael Allard is here as well. And, and Mr. Powers. Bob Powers. Is, yeah, Bob Powers is uh, <laughs> the, the guy who went, this is the guy you see walking with a little measuring device every time you bump into another car downtown. This is the guy who's wait, wait. doing that. <laughs> I have company with that concept. Very well. <laughs> I appreciate your moments tonight. If we can have a, have a couple just to give to you, they, they are important. Um, as you all know, and this is preaching to the choir, that money is tight everywhere. Um, grant money is tight as well, but the Northampton Police Department is committed to applying for whatever grants for public safety that we possibly can. We do apply for uh, drunk driving grants, um, click it or ticket grants for seat belts, and this year we applied for a very competitive grant for um, pedestrian, bicycle, and moped safety. Um, it was, as I said already, a very competitive grant. I had a, um, there was a great team of people writing it. Officer Allard uh, devoted a lot of time to this. Uh, the lieutenant on the day shift, Captain Conkus, and we were uh, granted $3,000, um, which doesn't again sound like a much, but it's a lot in a state that's strapped for money. Uh, $750 of the grant was granted for the use of buying equipment or materials. The other $1,250 was for uh, labor, for us to go out onto the street and actually enforce the grant. Um, we're proud we used all $750 of the grant money for materials on literature. We had posters printed. We had these leaflets that we passed out to you um, right now printed. These were handed out at the end of the school year last year to the students and all the schools. We just had 1,200 more printed uh, with the assistance of Smith Volk, um, which we're going to be able to redistribute. And for all of you and your constituents, we're going to have these at the department. If you feel that there's anybody out there, groups or meetings that you'd like to have these for, um, we have them, and we could certainly do the best we could to get more if we could. Um, I'll pass that around. The other $1,250 was used, again, for enforcement. 
We have officers on details that have gone out to key locations, uh, crosswalks in the city to monitor them where we've had incidents. We all know about New South Street, um, the crosswalk in front of Thorns, the crosswalk down at Pleasant in Maine, where, you know, we've had incidents. College is back. Uh, we all know we have a very vital downtown. We have a lot of bicyclists. We have a lot of pedestrians. Lord knows we have a lot of motorists. So again, what we're looking to do is put it all together uh, so that everybody can get the word and be safe for everybody else. Um, 64 hours roughly have been spent on enforcement with the grant. That 64 hours has been matched with departmental personnel. We've had people on duty also going out and doing the best they could with this. That's our in-kind contribution back to the grant. So um, as well as the grant people doing it on overtime, we've had officers out there on duty uh, doing the best they could. And we just had one speak down at the senior center. They just had a recent meeting. Um, Officer uh, Van Buskirk did a great job down there. Um, and you know, again, we've had them out there. The grant the pamphlets again. We've handed out over 4,000 already. Uh, and the other materials that we have are, are what's being passed around in that book. There are posters that we've had made up that are hoping to be disseminated. There are also trainings. Again, giving credit to Officer Allard that he put together that we've trained the uh, members of the department on on recognizing issues with moped safety, um, pedestrian safety, and again bicycle safety, enforcing the laws, recognizing the issues. Not that our officers aren't well trained and don't need it. Sometimes it's just a great refresher. So, and we have that those uh, that material there as well. We've done the best that we could um, trying to get this word out. I did a spot on News 40. I don't know if any of you caught that. I have nothing to sign. If you, I caught it. You wanted, I caught it. Come to find out, a lot more people watch the news than I thought. Because quite a few caught it. But um, we were on the news. Uh, we're also going to be on the radio. I um, contacted WHMP so we can try to get the word out through public. Um, announcements. Yeah, I'd, I'd just like to add that the book that we're handing out, the front section are the handouts that went to the schools. Uh, we printed out over 4,000 and gave a copy to every uh, student in the city of Northampton, uh, both in English and in Spanish. Um, and you've seen the brochures actually were printed in English and in Spanish. So we're trying to get the word <coughs> safety out <coughs> as easily as we can to everybody else. Also, if they visit the, the department's <coughs> website, we have uh, some presentations on the website as well as a very good expletive of uh, bicycle safety and the rules and laws for bicycles um, Any questions? Yeah, I know you've heard it before I I'm, I'm always the guy that drives 10 or 11 miles when I approach the crossings for the bike paths. Yes Elm Street the Hatfield those two together by where the old Lococos was in the DPW and the, the hospital We had called the 1105 number last week because a guy not a kid about 40 or so years old, came out with his earphones on, and I'm going 10 miles an hour as I'm crossing there. He ran right into the side of my truck. Well, that's the kind of education, sir, we'd really, we'd really like to make people aware of uh, yeah. to, to watch that. But I do. I, I get it down because that's that, any one of those, Chestnut Street, all of them. I mean, they just, I don't know what it is. They, they get those the headphones on, and they're in another mode. And um, I called immediately. I had to pull into the cemetery. And uh, I called the 1105 and reported it. Uh, I guess they went looking for the guy in the green shorts and the white T-shirt. So I don't know whether they ever found him or not, but uh, I'm not sure he's either. off on the side of the road. <laughs> yes. but, uh, it was amazing. It, it, it scared the heck out of me. Well, it, as simple as people looking before they cross in a crosswalk right downtown as to riding a bike across a, a public way for, on the bike path. Um, again, mopeds following the rules and staying on the side of the road. That This is all the, all the important stuff we're trying to get out using what limited grant efforts we have but I urge anybody that when they come to a the bike path crossing 10 miles an hour <laughs> you're slow it might feel like you're going slow but it's really worth it you need it needs to be paid attention to because the end result is catastrophic oh. so yeah Thank those you. those um, when there's a conflict okay. between a car and a bike you know we Oh yeah, usually wins that. No matter who's right or wrong, right? Correct, it's, exactly. it's not it's a good the answer. arguments you can have later, but uh, and um, there, there are things like segways and things like that, and skateboard issues too. Of course, and other means of transportation in the city that people use, alternative forms of transportation. Yes, they, they basically have to subscribe to the same. Um, we do recommend they subscribe to the same. Um, recommendations here on the brochure many of them apply to anybody moving on anything that the segways would be akin to a, a moped right and the skateboards which should not be in the downtown area if you're right I do recall. Yes. correct should should be doing the same thing that those those kids should be helmeted and 
should be monitoring what they're doing and where they're going. Yeah, it's, it's all about being safe no matter what type of vehicle you're in or on. Absolutely. And we have officers that see, you know, see violations or the children and, and do stop to talk to them. It's, it's about education it's more so than enforcement. Right. Uh, if we've gotten away from the stop, look, listen, and walk painting on the sidewalk, we always had as kids stop, look, <laughs> listen, walk. <clears throat> we don't do that anymore. No, nope. we're, we're dating ourselves now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but you know, <clears throat> day. I, I, um, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I, I haven't been paying attention apparently that to a, um, a court case in Hadley regarding a bicyclist who like to ride in the middle of the lane. The <coughs> magistrate just yeah. ruled yeah. that. Can, can you clarify? Can, do you, have you been? Have you seen that? The, I, I didn't hear of a ruling. Okay, that's fine. The, the, the I was just was, not. It was not unclear to me what the ruling actually the, was. The ruling was uh, essentially in a 54 or 52 page ruling, and actually, you can probably talk to Chad Kane about this, but it just came down. Uh, uh, Eli Damon of Hadley was uh, riding in the right lane in traffic and had um, had a number of encounters with the Hadley Police Department because. He said he had the the right, the granted right, to drive in the travel lane, and he challenged it all the way up to to a federal magistrate, and the magistrate just ruled that he had to yield. Um, slower vehicles always have to yield to the, to the far right to allow left passing vehicles. Mm -hmm. It's and it's a larger, more complicated thing because the Hadley police confiscated his bikes, and he's got there's a couple cases going, on, a couple of issues going on with that. Well, that, that, sir, has always been the case when we were talking about bicyclists and the mopeds. They're, they're, it's their obligation to stay to the right and out of the way into the faster-moving traffic. So without even knowing yeah. all of the elements that's of the case, that's what I would have. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I would have thought of as the jury. So the ruling was not anything that was decisive. It was, was decisive. really decisive. It was decisive in that if you feel, if you're a bicyclist and you have the right of way in a, in a travel lane, um, and you're slowing down traffic, then you have to yield. Um, but that's, as you say, that's that's true of virtually all vehicles, and that was the gist of that report. And, and on the same token, we need to educate operators. I mean, the the, the hooking right turn, yes, which is an issue with operators. Operators need to know if you just passed a slow moving bicycle, bicycle doing what they're supposed to be doing. They have an obligation to then look too. So, education all the way around. You can't, Absolutely, you can't leave anybody out of it. It's opening car doors. Mm -hmm. yeah, Another big one. Yes. Yes. And you go to certain communities and you rent a bicycle and they hand you a bicycle pedestrian policy pamphlet when you rent a bicycle like any of the, uh, the province town or even I think even Cambridge has one. Cape uh, does too. Yeah, you rent any place on the Cape, you rent a bicycle. They hand you a bicycle policy that the town has adopted. Martha's I haven't, I haven't seen, seen one here. Do we have one? I did. That would assist relieve the bicycle rental company of liability. <laughs> right. right. I, I think that's exactly what that is. <laughs> we don't want to overload you with anything else to do. But, but um, thank you very much for Thank you. For Any more questions for the gentleman, Sergeant Powers, and Patrolman Healy? That's Councilor Premier Daniels. Do you have another question? And we really, really appreciate your time and the thank ability. You. If you guys have thank any you. of your uh, constituents that wish to have any of these pamphlets or information, we're more than happy to do this. So is this available on the, on the police department's website too? Some information is available on the website. Other stuff will be available in the lobby uh, as we're still having it printed at Smith Folk. Okay, great. Who's your technical guy? Who, who does your websites and things <laughs> such as that? Uh, Lieutenant Casper is in charge of it. Okay. Does he know anything about these double poles up on? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Um, now we're at the approval of minutes. Um, the, uh, so, okay. The notice of release of executive session minutes of January 3rd, 2013, and July 11th, 2013, which is approved August 15th. Move to approve them. Second. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those minutes are now after long last release to the public. We will con be convening an executive session at the end of this meeting to talk about the minutes of the last executive session. So don't stay tuned for that because you can see it. <laughs> it's super secret and annoying. 
Uh, this is the reports of committees, appointments, and elections. Uh, do you want to take the, <laughs> as, a group, as a group of minutes? Yes. There's yeah. just one. There's just, just one. No. Uh, let's take first and June 18th and July 16th for TPC. Yeah. So moved. Yeah. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, and now next up is a new appointment to the Housing Authority, Lynn Wallace, Cardinal Way, Florence, uh, term uh, March 2013 to March 2018, replacing Iris Rosa. And this is recommended by the Committee on Appointments and Evaluations uh, back in the 19th. Move to approve. Yeah. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, she's familiar with these issues. Uh, Lynn was on the housing partnership before this. Um, or is, is she still on the housing partnership as well? She may be. Yeah. Maybe yeah. still. She on. is. So we unanimously uh, recommend. For yes, um, we had Lynn Wallace on social services and veterans affairs for um, housing partnership. Very well qualified and um, very reputable. And she will highly be involved throughout the city with housing she's really qualified for this position and she works very hard at it okay uh, all set for the vote all those in favor of lynn wallace serving uh, for the now northampton house of housing authority to end march 2018 please say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed okay. any one opposition any abstentions? Uh, Council Premier Daniels Post. Um, this is a reappointment of the Council on Aging. This is uh, Robert Montague of uh, 324 C Hatfield Street, Northampton, the term April 2013 to April 2016. I move to suspend Rule 30. Second. Rules and seconded. Any discussion on the suspension of rules? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? I'll accept the motion for the nomination. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Is he in good standing? I mean, is he? Yep. Um, Councilor Spector? Yeah, we, we have um, communicated with the mayor's office on all reappointments that they have assured us that Lynn in the mayor's office has assured us that if. Uh, they will check and make sure that it, that any appointments, reappointments, are in good standing. So, Councilor, and he, he Mr. Montague, has been involved a long time. He's he's really a valuable member. Any further discussion. All those in favor, please. Say aye. 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 Um. Uh, this is the new appointments to the Council on Aging, and we're going to separate them out. Um, to start with uh, Patricia Healy of 21 Longfellow Drive. Both, excuse me. Aren't those both going to be referred to committee? I yeah, but, but there's a request okay. to separate. Uh, Longfellow Drive in Florence, term uh, September 2013 to June 2015. That's filling the unexpired term of Mary Netto. Who we lost recently. Um, I'm going to abstain. You're going to abstain. And this is to refer. This is to refer. Thank you. Is there, is there a motion to refer? So moved. And is there a second? Second. Okay. And uh, Councillor Tacey and then Councillor Murphy. I, I just <clears throat> want to take a minute to just recognize um, Mary Netto for everything that she's done for the city and the Council on Aging over the years. I mean, very, very tough to replace somebody like that. Um, I just, sometimes you just can't say enough uh, about a member that passes. And she was absolutely tremendous. And a good friend of my family's all of our lives. So, Mary Netto, thank you very much. Councilmember. And uh, I as well want to thank Mary for her years of service. She was a wonderful person, really participated in everything at the senior center. She was a a good member of the community and a hard worker on behalf of the senior center and she'll be missed she was a really good citizen of Northampton she did a lot of things for a lot of people so we'll miss her a lot council of Bart. yes uh, Mary Netto was a very dear friend of mine for many many years 
And when she had talked to me about being involved in the senior center, I told her, Mary, you'd be excellent of participating at the senior center. And to have her on the board was probably one of the greatest things that could have happened for Mary. She did everything there, never complained, and she wanted to help make money for the senior center. Um, many of us um, went to her wake and to her funeral, and she will be missed dearly. And I have to say with her family, which I have known forever, that they have really participated in the senior center and donated a lot of money with um, like the new TV screen that they have and all that. So their hearts are there for the senior center. And I, I just want to say she will be dearly missed by many, many people in the city. Mary, it's us slogan was it is what it is i just want to echo all that I, I won't you know reiterate too much but she was really truly a terrific person she was a friend of mine and a great asset to the city thank you one more quick <clears throat> they were also the, she was the proprietor of the model bake shop in florence that we all went to as kids on our way to school and absolutely fantastic they out they really looked out for the kids in the neighborhood and just great way of life she'll very 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 missed right now thank you <clears throat> um, okay uh, so all those in favor of uh, forwarding uh, Patricia Healy's recommendation to uh, <laughs> recommendations uh, please say aye aye, aye. aye. <clears throat> more abstention uh, next up, Elaine Real of 12 East Street, Northampton. The term April 2013 to April 2016, filling the expired term of Margo Wells. Yeah. Move to refer. Second, Second it. Okay. So motion to refer. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Next up, uh, uh, an appointment to the planning board from associate member to full member, Carla Youngblood, 46 Rockland Heights Road, Northampton, term to expire. Uh, March 2016, filling the expired term of Marilyn Richards. Um, I would like to suspend Rule 30 and move to approve her to a full member. Okay. Uh, first, we got a second the suspend the okay. Okay. suspension okay. of the rules. Any discussion on the suspension of rules? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. I'll now accept a motion to move to approve. Second. And a discussion, please. Council of Barger, Council Spectre, like to speak to this? This is a uh, <clears throat> from an associate to full member. It, I don't think it was just a few weeks ago, but I do remember interviewing her. It wasn't that long ago. Maybe it was. But this is, again, what our policy when someone is in good standing, whether it's an associate member or it's a full member for reappointment, our policy has been not to call them back again for an interview unless for some reason any counselor uh, wants us to do that and specifically ask, or if we've heard something that might uh, kind of demand that we uh, ask some questions at that meeting. Any other discussion? All those in favor of uh, promoting Carla Youngblood to full membership of the <coughs> board, please say aye. 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 And opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, this is a report to the rec, uh, the Recreation Commission. Uh, Tom Parent, 57 Beacon Street, Florence. Term uh, starts in June 2013, which you may recall has already happened, <laughs> and expires June 2016. Suspend Rule 30. Second. There's a motion to suspend rules. Any discussion? All those in favor of suspending rules? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. I'll accept a motion to approve. Aye. Move to approve. Aye. Okay. Any discussion? Yes. Council Tacey. Anybody that's ever had any yes. kids that were involved in sports in the city of Northampton, the recreation department yeah. in any way, knows that this guy is aces. That's all I have to say. Yeah. Tom Parent, thank you very much yeah. for your service, and I hope you continue. And I'd like to thank him for continuing. I mean, we'll be naming a field after this guy someday. He is so Absolutely. dedicated to the rec department. We're lucky to have him and his continued interest. He's a great guy. Absolutely. Any further discussion? 
beatification? <laughs> Is he, okay. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Tom's not here, is he? <laughs> <laughs> we don't have just the charter does not allow us to beatify anyone. I don't want anyone to get any confusion here. We're not allowed to do <laughs> yeah, that. Thank you, though. <laughs> say thank you. Absolutely. Now comes the time that I pass the gavel figuratively <laughs> to uh, Council Murphy as we convene the finance. We recess out of the regular meeting and convene in finance. You can give it to him. It's right there. I know, but you know. Hey, we're losing members here. I'm not feeling real good about <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Bring them back. Thank you. Um, Mary, would you call the roll of finance? I'm here. 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 So our first action, uh, and this is this is a routine thing for us. We're going to we're going to um, rescind the, the borrowing authorization for a planning purchase of land. You know, we authorize the spending with the understanding that planning is going to get a grant. And when they get the grant, we rescind the borrowing because we don't need to use it. So this is upon the authorization or upon the recommendation of Mayor David Narkowitz, ordered that the council vote to rescind only the. Th $535,000 of borrowing authorized uh, under the loan order approved March 1st, 2012 for the purchase and acquisition of land easements or conservation restrictions for the property on Coles Meadow Road to expand the Broad Brook Fitzgerald Lake Greenway. I move to move for recommendation. Yeah. Is there a second? second. Okay. All right. Any questions about this one? We do these all the time when we get, when we secure the grant funding, we rescind the borrowing authorization. It's part of the element of getting the grant. Right, is to, to have a backup. That we have a willingness to borrow. Thank you. Yeah. Um, if there's any questions on this, Mr. Fiden's here. He could speak to it, but we do this all the time. Are there any questions? For Mr. No. No. So, in other words, the project is completed. So, that is why we are yeah. tonight we have, we have asking to revoke yeah. the we project. Send. Okay, so that we can get it off the books. Right. Just remove it. So any more questions on this? Nope. Then all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right, and the next one is a, and this is a leftover bill from FY13, which needs our authorization to pay. This is upon the recommendation of Mayor David Narkowitz's order that the council authorizes payment of two prior fiscal year bills from fiscal 13. Uh, to Acre Computer Services in the amount of $352.50. Uh, that's from the Assessor's Office and Franklin Regional Council Government's amount of $1,000, both bills to be paid using FY14 OM budgets in these same departments. So it's still departmental money, yep. but they are leftover bills. Are there any questions about this one? No. No. Move, move to approve. Okay. Or second. Second. All right. yeah. I would like to ask. This Franklin Council of Government, Regional Council of Governments, this was something that was kicked around, I read back here, in 2002, and then it was set up in 2003. We do this yearly. Have we ever had a report or anything on just exactly how this has worked out? Or I mean, it's been a long time. It's been 10 years. We've been through a recession. We've been through everything. And I'm kind of curious as to uh, just exactly I want somebody to, it's only $1,000, but I'd like somebody to sell me this again. I can explain why, why we are no. joining it. Um, you may recall that when we um, offer tax increment financing yeah. to, um, to businesses around the city, um, one, of the thing, one of the requirements that the state um, requires is that the project be what's, call, what's in, in what's called an economic target area. Uh, <laughs> and so... Uh, when we were first investigating these back in 2002, we discovered that we were unable to create just a Hampshire County economic target area. Uh, we had to uh, utilize a Franklin Hampshire economic target area. So if you go back and look at all of those resolutions related to the TIFs we've done over time, they always have a whereas the project is located in the Franklin Hampshire economic target area. And that, uh, that target area is managed by the Franklin County uh, 
the planning agency that's in Franklin County. They're the, they're the managers of it. So in order for us to uh, join or be part, officially part of that economic target area, we have to essentially join uh, that uh, particular planning agency for that purpose. So it's sort of a sort of a fee, if you will, to be part of that economic target area. I mean, the benefit, obviously, is that it has allowed us to then leverage these different uh, tax incentives, not only locally, but it also gives access to some of those businesses to state um, financing uh, packages as well. Uh, but they have to be part of one of these economic target areas, and in our case, it's a Franklin, Hampshire target area. In, in the arena of competitiveness and things such as that with businesses and, and communities, it also says in the agreement that we won't try to solicit any business in Greenfield to move to Northampton. And it also says if a business comes to Northampton and wants to move to Northampton, that we are required to contact Greenfield, if that business is coming from Greenfield, within five days of them making the inquiry. And I. It just, somebody would have to really sell me on that again. I mean, the way the way competition is today, um, I, I have a hard time wrapping my head around that one. And I don't know why you can't be competitive and why this precludes that. Somebody would have to make a pretty good case to me to eliminate that of the competitiveness of, of business or municipalities trying to strike deals with different i mean that's what the tiffs are all about it seems like we work on this all the time it's just funny it just it, it strikes me as odd being in business it strikes me as odd I'll, I'll I don't know if you, were you were you asking me to answer that or yeah i was just kind of wondering what, what your thoughts were on it i mean you're well, I can say that, well, one of the TIFs, for example, and I know that we, there was a lot of communication around it, one of the TIFs this council granted was to the uh, Daily Hampshire Gazette, and part of that involved building a new printing press and actually moving the printing of the Greenfield Recorder to Northampton, and, right. and some jobs moved here. Uh, but that was all done out in the open. Everyone knew about it. It was part of the process. And I would also add that Terry Masterson, um, is part of a group in the Pioneer Valley called the Economic Development Partners, which is basically all of all of the economic development directors for the various cities, um, and they belong to it. It's and he actually was shocked when he came here because he's coming from New York State, where it is a little more cutthroat, um, and he's and it's actually a, an attempt to try to to work collaboratively together and to think regionally, um, because again, if a, if we can attract a big manufacturer to Greenfield or to Northampton or to Holyoke or to Hatfield, it's going to benefit the whole region. Yeah. So, so I think that's the, 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 our approach has been to work collaboratively. I can't think of any times that that's been triggered. Um, I, I can't really think of a time that it's been triggered other than that case of the Daily Hampshire Gazette. Um, but obviously, the folks at the recorder were part of that and, and, uh, and we were in contact with officials in Greenfield about it. So I don't really think it's been an impediment that I've seen in the time that I've been following this process. So I'm not as concerned about it. Again, the benefits, it's more of a formality that we have to belong in order to, to be able to qualify for these uh, state incentive programs. Yeah, and, but if you were a business owner, <clears throat> you would have a hard time pulling that trigger to try and make a move out of a town to another town. I don't know. I just, uh, anyway, I'll leave it alone. It's only a thousand bucks, but still, um, I look at the business part of it rather than the thousand dollars. Councilor Dwight. Uh, did you want to go first? You, um, is that accurate, though, that, that you would be precluded from actively trying to recruit other businesses from communities involved? I think I think what Councillor um, Tace was referring to is a notification clause that you would uh, oh, notify. So, okay, so it's not something that would preclude you. You have to no. give notification. That, right. You would but let it would preclude us from trying to recruit a business well, from Greenfield to come is that here. That's the case. Oh, absolutely. But it talks about giving notification if you have an inquiry and, and things like that. Exactly. Yeah. Right, but it says, so the it says that it says that the city will not. You will not go out and try to draw that business out of Greenfield to come to Northampton. So is that so it is is it is it it's preclusion or sim, is it preclusion or simply notification? No, it's preclusion. 
I guess I'll have to understand what, what Councilor Tacey first read sounded more just, like just a five-day notification window, so I'm not sure. Um, well, notification is significantly different from preclusion. Yeah. It's not, you're not exempted from it. I, I actually want to speak more to the philosophical point um, in that regionalization actually is critical, and, and I think competitive, we are no longer competitive agencies as communities, that there's no profit in that, literally and figuratively. That that I think to, uh, to <laughs> Mayor Narkowitz's point that any regional development of a business that can benefit that may be foundering in some other community that wants to move to another community where there's better access, the fact that we keep retain those jobs is of more critical importance than anything. The jobs, of course, are the bigger drivers, and if 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 to create a competitive bidding dimension and and mistrust between communities for for businesses I don't think is in anyone's benefit except possibly some larger corporations that don't have bases here in the, in the city <coughs> in the state yeah. well, it says Northampton and Hatfield agree not to seek the relocation of existing businesses from other member communities in the Franklin County ETA upon inquiry from a business located in a member community about relocating to Northampton or Hatfield the host community will be notified within five days of the initial contact my problem would be Northampton and Hatfield agree not to seek the relocation of existing businesses. So we could not go out and try to solicit mm -hmm. one of those businesses to move to Northampton, whether or not it was going to be economically beneficial to us or not. But if they choose to move here, we're not precluded to do anything but notice that they've inquired. Yeah, I agree. But it's just the language that uh, strikes me as odd. It says that we cannot solicit their business here. Is that reciprocal? They, yes, it's a reciprocal yep. thing, meaning that they can, in turn can. They also can't it. come here and it's try to get a treaty, yeah. <laughs> and I think it's a reasonable treaty given the circumstances and 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 the objective personally. But so, so any other discussion on this one? And do we have a, we had a motion, correct? We had a motion to oh, recommend. Good. Yeah. So all in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Right. We'll move on to the next. This is also upon the recommendation of Mayor Dar David Narkowitz. Order that, whereas Mass General Law for, uh, C40 4A allows for joint operation of public activities among governmental units, and whereas that same general law requires that such intergovernmental aid agreements be approved in a city by a city council and the mayor, and whereas the city of Northampton provides services to and shares services with other municipalities. Now, therefore, pursuant to Mass General Law C-40, 4A, the city council hereby authorizes the city of Northampton to enter into an intermunicipal agreement with the Franklin Regional Council of Governments to annually provide administrative support related to Northampton's membership in the Franklin County Economic Target Area, as approved by Mayor Higgins, starting August 27, 2003. Move to recommend. Second. 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 Okay. Discussion on this one. Councillor Labarge. Um, I feel this is a great opportunity um, to enter into a intermunicipal agreement. I feel that this would help us to stimulate job creations, attract new businesses, and retain and expand existing businesses. So I really feel. This is the right direction. Okay. Oh, Mr. Freeman Daniels. This is just a question of procedure. Uh, is this a financial order or a general order? I'm just curious yeah, why well, it was introduced to the finance committee. The actually, the, as we saw in the previous order, the membership in this costs us a thousand dollars. So it it we're, it's here because of the fact that we're going to spend money on it, uh, mm -hmm. and we have been spending money on it in the past. So that's kind of why it's here. Mm -hmm. Further discussion on this one? All right. Councillor Tacey? Yeah, I just, I'm glad that we've made this distinction because my vote, my yes vote to support the $1,000 payment was for last year. Yeah. Okay. Just want to make that clear. Now we will come up with the order for this year. For it to continue on this year. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're discussing now. Mm -hmm. Comment on that one? Yes. yes I don't intend to support it. I think it's time that we look at it. And we see some data, a little bit of research, and just look into it and see just exactly if it is in the best interest. A lot of things have changed since 2002. This is a different normal. So um, not that I 
am dead set against it. I would just like to see a little bit of data and see what's happened. Else respect. Just a question again. I, I, I just need some help here. If we don't belong, then we cannot continue to offer TIFs. Is that correct? With that confirmation from the mayor. Mayor. It's our understanding that so no, if we no membership no tip okay so if we don't if we're not a member if we don't approve this then the incentives we do have which are the very concerns you were just talking about to be competitive yeah. we've just knocked out one of those like it or not we have just said we are not going to be able to offer tiffs but other communities can so therefore it seems to me that we're tying our hands by not spending the thousand dollars to be able to offer TIFs, and even if we only keep one business over the next couple of years by doing that, it will pay off and pay that thousand dollars back Councilor over Adams. and over. I agree, that's a good point, Councilor Spector. But, Mayor, to your knowledge, does is, does more information exist? Do you know that could be provided to Councilor Tacey and his concern? I can certainly ask the uh, so the the economic target areas themselves are kind of established and managed by the state and they're based on certain metrics to, to qualify what areas are, have enough of a critical mass to qualify as one of these target areas. So I can, we can certainly try to inquire whether the state has collected data on what's been happening within the target area. Um, so that's, I mean, the idea I think is that the, the, the members of this target area are kind of collectively uh, coming together to say we're trying to attract um, you know, business to this particular region, um, and and not so much we're going to try to take you know stuff away from each other, but we're trying to work as a region. So I think that's why. But we can certainly ask whether there's data on it. Um, again, for our purposes, we were doing it because it was the only way to access uh, not only the TIF, but the TIF, as you know, is often just a gateway to be able to then get larger state tax credits for many of these businesses. So. Yeah, I, I understand all that, mm -hmm. um, but I really haven't seen any any data or anything come to the council on this year by year by year. I've, I've seen nothing okay. except that we put a thousand dollars out every year, and I just would wonder just how this. And as far as the TIF goes, I mean, I've seen arguments back and forth here at this council between every member about whether or not to even offer TIFs. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> it's been kicked back and forth. Some it's corporate welfare. It's many different things and why are we going when we're in a state that we're in where we are looking to generate more revenue we are giving up some revenue but then again on the other hand we get the argument that they'll come here because they'll get a bigger state tax uh, break so it just seems that the paper comes here it's about it's three pages and uh, it's came out in 2002 and we really haven't had the information this comes to us it doesn't say how beneficial it's been or anything and it it does talk about not being able to solicit a business out of greenfield to here even if we had some really good program for them so anyway okay uh, i just look at northampton and i can search my job we can try to see if there's okay. some data available to report to you on that um other than obviously the tiffs that we've offered over the time and the job the job creation that's been tied to those tiffs but we just just a first reading yes i believe mm -hmm. it would be and then it gets two meetings so we maybe could get something by the next uh yeah, probably not <laughs> we can try okay yep. thank you any other comment on this one i just like to throw in that the tiff is a very very powerful incentive not only at it's what we can do at the local level, but it opens up other avenues to these people to come here. And it does keep us competitive with surrounding communities. You know, the Greater Springfield area offers these all the time. And, you know, if we're grouped with Franklin County, because it needs to be that way, we need to do that to continue to have this tool. Because it's a very powerful incentive to people to relocate or just simply to expand. Because some of our existing businesses, when they expand, can take advantage of this. I think Cole Morgan took advantage of it. Tiger Press took advantage of it. Mm -hmm. The Daily Hampshire Gazette. So it helps us protect. Cole Morgan did, yeah. Well, they were Cole Morgan at the time, I think. Uh, but so they are very Village. valuable. Right. We don't lose opportunities. We don't lose existing jobs because yeah. of this flexibility. And also, Mars, did you want to comment? Yeah, I, I just I noticed here that they're asking for two readings tonight on that. In the in the full meeting. Yeah. Because he asked if this was only, you know, one um, voting tonight. Um, I, Councilor Tays. I'm just 
I was just looking for a little more information. I've heard it asked for before at this on this mm -hmm. this council. Mm -hmm. um, I just uh, if if it's available, I know Christopher Village is here, or is being is about to be built. I understand, mm -hmm. and they have a TIF. Yep, mm -hmm. that's the most recent one. That's the most recent one. Right. So, um, uh, Mayor Nakrits, you want to comment again? Do you have anything else to add? Or no, I just I think we were more concerned about the two readings on the FY13 bill, uh, which is outstanding, and yeah. we need a council. Right action to do that obviously the intermunicipal agreement um you know uh it, it, it's been since 2003 that you voted that you uh, you haven't voted on it since 2003 right. so if we wait another two weeks it's probably not going to be okay. a big okay. issue Fair so yeah. so um are we ready to vote on this in finance okay recommendation to the floor all right all aye. all those in favor of a positive recommendation say aye aye, aye. 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 Okay, so that was unanimous. No one opposed? Yep, yep. That'll get it out to the full council. The full council. All right, so we'll move on. Also, upon the recommendation of Mayor David Knockwood, this is a budgetary transfer in the amount of $8,661 be made from the FY14 reserve for personnel to the FY14 Board of Health permanent salaries as a line item to fund hours per week for our public health nurse. Move to recommend. Second. Second it. All righty. As I understand it, we're losing our public health nurse to Amherst, so we're going to enhance this with a few more hours and then go out looking for a new public health nurse for Northampton. And the director, Meredith, is here. If you would like her to speak to this, we can recognize her. I'd like to make a motion to recognize our director. Second. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So you're on to explain why we're doing this. Councillors, thank you for inviting me up here. Um, yes, we are losing our public health nurse, which is very sad to our department, to Amherst. This was a shared position that we had for Amherst for the past year. It's a 40 hour a week position. 20 hours were allocated to Amherst, 20 hours were allocated to the city of Northampton. After evaluating and speaking about the position with the uh, public health director in Amherst, both of us kind of agreed, but not saying the words out loud, that these communities are too large to have this as a shared position. Um, we both, both communities have a large homeless population. The elderly population is growing and 20 hours is really not enough in either communities to support that. But they did make the, the first move and have precipitated the contract to end. Um, we have 90 days to ho post, hopefully, with an increase of an extra 10 hours to a 30-hour week position. And uh, <laughs> I think it's actually going to be a good opportunity for the city of Northampton. Mm -hmm. So this would be creating a 30-hour position from what was a 20-hour position, we'd have our own right. nurse. Yes, right. okay. exactly. Uh, we'll start off with Councilor Dwight and work our way around. So, so it would seem clear that Amherst is not part of this coalition of not pillaging other <laughs> communities, <laughs> as we said. Uh, <laughs> so, um, the Council of Nurses. Is, so in your mind, that will this be enough to offset the challenges that, you're, that we're facing here? I think it's a good start, honestly. Um, it, you know, baby steps. Uh, I didn't want to go full force with a 30 hour week position. I've been in my role for a year. I do know that we do need an increase in hours, and I'm hoping that the 30, the 30 hours will support that. But again, um, the environment is changing, behaviors are changing, and this the public health nurse's position helps support you know, things that we are doing in the department and support direct care, you know, to the community members also. Yeah. I spoke with Donna at, at length about this today too, but uh, my question was also whether 30 hours uh, would be enough. But anyway, uh, to start there is fine. And we've had incidents of uh, Triple E close here at hand and things such as that. So, um, and we've had a lot of people talk about mosquito spraying and things such as that. And I really want somebody to be weighing in on that. Mm -hmm. It's my opinion that um, I think. We should be spraying for mosquitoes. I'm sorry. I mean, that's my opinion. Um, but whether that's shared by the rest of the community, I don't know. And uh, but anyway, I, I I'm going to support this, and um, I think I probably would have supported it if it was for 40 hours, also. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Barger. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. 
Um, Meredith, I want to thank you um, for the information that you have forwarded us to us counselors. That way we can look at the total census of in Amherst versus Northampton. And I agree about increasing the hours on the public health nurse. I think we have a lot going on in this city, and you're correct. The environment, there's a lot of issues that are coming up, even in wards. Um, I'm hearing now getting phone calls about how people will give things out free in front of their yards and they just leave them for weeks and weeks and people are concerned they get soaking wet and all that and mosquitoes and so forth. There keeps coming more and more of a problem in our city of yards, how they look and so forth. And you know, you're busy on my ward a lot too. So I wanna thank you, thank you, you know, Appreciate for that. the information that you have sent to us counselors and I do support it. And I would support it also if it went to three hours a week. Councilor Carney. Thank you. Meredith, did the town of Amherst um, replace those hours then with 40 hours? Has she gone to a full-time position there? I'm not sure what they're doing yet. That hasn't been disclosed. Okay, but she had 20 and 20? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. And I would say it's too bad every interaction I've had with her when she was here was excellent. So it's. If we are in fact going to lose her to Amherst, that's too bad because she did a good job here. She'll be sorely missed, yes. Yeah. She's a wonderful clinician. Mm -hmm. Any other questions before we vote on this one? Okay. All in favor of a positive recommendation? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Thank you. Thank you, Councillors. And do you want, does Meredith need to stay for the full meeting? Or no. no. Bye, Bye, Meredith. Thank you. <laughs> you might be asked to stay. Yeah. You're welcome. It's very, it'll be exciting. <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> And this is on our recommendation. Upon the recommendation of the Finance Committee, order that whereas the Northampton Charter now places the responsibility for the award of a contract for annual independent audit on the City Council, and whereas the Mayor included funds in the City Council budget sufficient to satisfy the estimated cost of conducting the annual audit, and whereas the Charter requires that the award of a contract for the annual audit be made by the City Council on or before the 15th of September each year. Now, therefore, it be ordered that the City Council engages as the services of Scanlon Associates of South Deerfield for the fiscal 14 audit and associated reports. And again, this, this shifted to us, and Mr. Scanlon has done this for years, but we need to formally recommend and actually have two readings tonight so that we make the 15th deadline in the new charter. It's the first time we've done this, but it, uh, it's something we need to do get over with tonight so to recommend second second all right discussion on this one uh, Councilor Adams how many years has it been since Scanlon has done this audit many uh, a do long you, do time you know? since uh, I've been decades. a counselor really? uh, yes. the mayor's office anyone remember I, every year since 2004 Councilor LaBarge yes as long as I've been a counselor for 16 yeah. years I Mr. Scanlon the father is who we dealt with. We're in the with. second generation of Scanlon's now doing I, this. I, I think as far I've got, I have them back, I think, as far as 20 years, and it's been Scanlon. So here, Adams? Here's where I'm going with that question. <laughs> yeah. um, would we benefit from having someone else look at this to have a new, fresh set of eyes? I mean, I, I just, it just seems that um, I, I trust Scanlon, and I'm sure he, you know, he has ethical duties, and, and he wouldn't just you know, say everything's wonderful if, if it's not. But would it make sense to have a fresh set of eyes on this after having the same company doing it year after year? Uh, we, in fact, actually, the, when there was some discussion about this after the charter assigned it to us to hire, essentially, the, the auditor. And that is, I think, an appropriate discussion. I think at this, given the, the shortage of time, and the circumstances and that we know and the and the very good work and all truthfulness and I think you're right um, it's recommended I think the state recommends that you have different eyes look at something just to, they might spot something the other auditor didn't to become a culture of familiarity and that's something we should discuss with enough time to review uh, auditors uh, take bids and so on and so forth which is clearly not the case now we just we don't have the time at this point and we really, I don't think we had enough time given all the other circumstances after the charter. So this does not, in the word of the day, preclude uh, a review and consideration of another auditor in the future. And, um, and, and it's, I think, not an unreasonable discussion to have. But I think at this point, I think it's kind of appropriate 
to proceed given the deadline and we know the depth and quality of the services plus the familiarity of, of city finances and the financial director's uh, ability to work very well with him. He's very responsive. Um, all things considered, I think it's in our best interest to proceed with an affirmative vote this time and then consider next time, next go around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with that. And, and maybe in the future, next mm -hmm. council, that can hopefully that'll come back okay. up for discussion. Yeah, because this is catching us short with the new charter just coming in that we have to deal with this. Councilor Bars. Um, maybe the mayor or Susan could help me out. Um, with Scanlon and Associates, I do know for a fact that they do audit once a year. Some cities don't audit for two years. Is that correct? They're very, very thorough, and um, they really go through all the departments. So I think they're well worth having. And, and I know, you know, in, in the corporate world, Many large corporations have a habit of changing auditors by policy every five years, every 10 years for that reason. But unlike corporations, and this is kind of for the folks at home, corporations do not have the Massachusetts Department of Revenue dissecting their audit every year. So we have the added protection of all of the Mass General Laws relative to municipal finance. Scanlon does our audit, and then the Department of Revenue inspects the audit to make sure it's thorough. So there's another level of scrutiny after our audit. So I don't want people to think that we're rubber stamping this in a hurry this year, that there's going to be any disadvantage to the city or the citizens, because the DOR really does take these things apart and make sure everything's in line. So we're, we're caught short this year. We certainly can examine the policy, but I don't want people at home to think that the Commonwealth, God bless them, are not also auditing the audit after we finish it to make sure that all our ducks are in a row. So. This is not going to allow us to get away, to get away with anything that the DOR doesn't spot, I'm sure. So, but I agree we can try it if we, if we want to. Councilor, I want to echo. Daisy. No, I was going to say the Department of Revenue really picks this up. No stone right. unturned. They've read it before we've read it. I mean, they've mm -hmm. got it, and they've digested it long before we have. But and and uh, one thing I do appreciate about uh, Scanlon is um, he has proven not to be afraid to say something that may be abrasive to the chief executive officer in the city or department heads or, or department mm -hmm. heads or anything he is exactly. and he's right out there on everything so uh and i read him from cover to cover uh so anyway but that's not to say that there might not be a time when we might want to change things up a little bit because you don't want to get stagnant either and i, I agree with Councilor adams question and i think maybe it, should have a little scrutiny um, after this, but right now is not the time. Yes, yeah, short, kind of short time. Councilor Barge, no, do you have another okay. comment? You know, and I, I would remind everybody, um, though, in in the time that I've been here, eight years, those management letters have been getting smaller and smaller, and the items that the auditor says we need to look into, you know, it's like down to changing the coke machine now. We've taken care of many of the big items that they were worried about, so. Um, I think we're it's safe for this year, but so let's get a new auditor to give us a longer list then. Yeah, we got a longer list. <laughs> Just two seconds. I did. I I did ask the same question that Councilor Adams. I asked it two years ago yeah. about changing up. Are we getting stagnant? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. right. thank you. So, any other discussion on this one? And again, this will we'll be looking for two readings in the council meeting because of the deadline of the fifteenth. All in favor of positive recommendation of Aye. finance? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, this one is on the recommendation of the Conservation Commission. Uh, ordered that the Open Space and Recreation Multi-Use Plan 2011 through 2018 recommends expanding the Broadbrook Greenway and filling in gaps in the Greenway. And the Rothenberg family has agreed to sell nine acres plus or minus between North Farms and Coles Meadow Road. Uh, map ID 2-10 for, for $10,800 and whereas this acquisition will remove a significant wildlife and ecological gap in the Greenway and help preserve area drinking water uh, supplies and all acquisition funds will be drawn from community donations and existing Community Preservation Act grants and no new appropriation is required. Now therefore it be ordered that the Conservation Commission is authorized to purchase or otherwise acquire for conservation and passive recreation purposes on as provided by Section 8C of Chapter 40 of the General Laws, Community Pre 
Preservation Act and Article 97 of the amendments to the Massachusetts Constitution, any fee easement or conservation restriction as defined in Section 31 of Chapter 184 of the General Laws or any other interest in the above land and any immediately adjoining land that the city is authorized to accept and expand grants and expand grants and donations for that purpose, that the City Council hereby accepts such conservation restriction and that the Conservation Commission is authorized to grant conservation restrictions on any land so acquired. And this is a landlocked parcel between Coles Meadow and North Farms Road. Okay. And Mr. Fiden is here. Move I want to, to recognize him to talk to us about this. Move to recommend first. I Second. did. All right. Second. All in favor? Second. Aye. 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 Great. Mr. Fiden. So it's very straightforward. The Conservation Commission has been trying to preserve the land from Fitzgerald Lake up to the Hatfield town line. This is a key part of that, that gap that's there. Um, Broadbrook Coalition dedicated $3,000 towards the purchase. The remainder of the CPA. I would ask you to amend it where um, David uh, kindly read, uh, changed my word. It actually s should say expended and not expanded. <laughs> uh, Scribner's error. Yeah. So. I'm happy to reread it. No, no, no. no. <laughs> it's, fine. it's fine. It actually says expand. Right, but we want to expend grants. To, to but you want to expend. expend. And I read, it, but it's on here that way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It seems strange to me, too, but yeah. no, I read agree. them the way I see them, <laughs> which can get you in trouble sometimes. Councillor Freeman Daniel. Thank you. So the Broadbrook Coalition will be the holder of the conservation restriction? Uh, no, Pride Kestrel no. Land Trust. Oh. Uh, Broadbrook doesn't want to hold them long term. Kestrel's who we've worked on so far. So who will hold it? So Kestrel Land Trust has been our partner for, so whenever we buy land where CPA is funding yep. it, we're required to grant someone a conservation restriction. Kestrel now holds CRs in about 680 acres of conservation land, and it's our intention to keep working with them. Yeah, that's right. There are usual suspect for these sort of things. Right? They hold a lot. In the Meadows, we work with Mass Audubon or Meadows City Conservation Coalition, but otherwise it's Kestrel everywhere else. So, uh, any other questions on this one? Yeah, I just want, I just want you to, to put it together for me. Where, there's another piece that we're looking at right now, which is the Volinger. That's correct. Where is that located on here? So, because you've already approved it, I know this is on here. Question. Some. I'm just kind of curious as to where where it is and um, where we're going. It's sort of hard to describe, but you see a pinch point that's right here, sort of a narrow point in the yep, area. Yep, I see it. Um, Volinger's parcel is right in the middle of that pinch point. Right here. Right, so right with the narrow. Yep. I see a little narrow strip underneath the arrow. Can, can counselor state the relevance to the current? Yeah, well, it is. I just, no, that's okay. Just to explain to me what the, yeah, your just, curiosity is I, leading to. Connected, that's all. I know we're okay. doing that that's one fine. after another. That's fine. I just yeah. didn't understand no, the connection. 40 acres or 50 acres between the two. Already. There is. Yes. Okay, that's all I needed to know. Thank you very okay. much. And then just for the folks at home, this piece is probably dead in the middle between North Farms and Coles Meadow Road, and it is completely landlocked and currently surrounded by other land that we own on three sides. Right. right. Three and a half right. sides, so basically. It's just filling in the section. Councilor Freeman Dean. The, the Crestwood Trust also has the conservation restrictions for the other land around it? For all the land we've purchased with CPA. So for the earlier pre-CPA oh. purchases, we weren't required to do that. But yes, the, the, broad, the uh, Broadbrook Gap we just purchased on last year, they hold that, the Volunteer parcel, they will hold the CR on, so. Mm -hmm. So any further questions on this one? Then in finance, all in favor of a positive recommendation, say aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. And one more. Also a land purchase. On the recommendation of the Conservation Commission, ordered that whereas the Open Space Recreation and Multi Use Plan 2011 2018 recommends preserving farmland in the meadows, and whereas the Massachusetts Department of Agricultural Resources, working with the city and the Kestrel Land Trust, is interested in obtaining an agricultural preservation restriction on approximately 8.5 acres after a house lot exclusion of land now or formerly owned by Marsha Russell on Fair Street Extension, and whereas an APR would jointly be held by the Commonwealth and the City of Northampton, with the City contributing 20% match or $3,400, 
and the Commonwealth funding 80 percent or 13,600 with all funds coming from existing Community Preservation Act funds and no new appropriations are required. Now therefore it be ordered that the city acting through its Conservation Commission is authorized to purchase or otherwise acquire for conservation agriculture and passive recreation purposes as provided by section 8c of chapter 40 of the general laws the community preservation act and article 97 of the amendments to the massachusetts constitution the above described agricultural preservation restriction as defined in section 31 of chapter 184 of the general laws and that the city council hereby accepts such restrictions recommend and mr five is back so generally, as you know, when we're buying conservation land, the city buys the land in fee, and then typically Castro gets the conservation certificates. When we're dealing with working landscapes, we want to keep it in an active agriculture. So this land would remain in private ownership as a for, for farmer. It will hopefully be farmed forever. The city's role is just making sure that land never gets sold for development or converted out of agriculture. It's, it's the meadows, it's floodplain, so it doesn't have much risk of being developed anyway, but it does have a greater risk of being converted to non agricultural uses. So the APR not only protects it, but it creates an affirmative obligation to farm. Councillor Tacey. And just explain the difference between the price per acre from this one and the last one. I mean, this one is $1,600, and I think the other was 1000 Is there, is it just something, a number you come up with that you agree with a, a seller or? No, I mean, formula? Does it, well, they have to be appraised. So um, this one's based on appraisal. So the, the Commonwealth put together this deal. The city's asked to put up our 20%, but the Commonwealth put together the deal. They hired an appraiser out of Westfield. He's, he came up with a value for what he thought farmland was, ba was worth yep. based on comparable sales, what he thought the land was worth without development restrictions, and the difference between those two is this number. Yeah. So this is producing farmland. The other piece was trees and rocks yeah. in the middle of the woods. Yeah. I just want everybody to know because I'll get questions about it. Councilor Bach. So if I'm understanding what you're saying, 80% is by the state. That's correct. And 20%, which is at the CPA. That's correct. Correct. So with the Russell property, looking at what this language is, that it still will remain in private hands, correct? And, we'll, and they will continue to pay taxes on it. That's correct. Okay. Councilor Freeman Daniel. Yeah. Uh, did I see that a house lot was going to be carved out? It's already there. So her house is there. So oh, she owns about 10 acres of land, and that will remain. That's fine. I, I just I was surprised that someone was going to build. No, no. <laughs> it just accommodates an existing job. Any other questions in finance? Then all in favor of a positive recommendation? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Then. That covers our agenda. Motion Move to, to adjourn. adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Move to adjourn. Favorite? Second. Aye. Aye. And here's back. your tool back. Thank you. My gavel. Uh, okay. Back to the Break regular time, order Jesse. business. Uh, Break time. Red Sox are up over the Yankees by one run. That's cool. Could you request uh, a break, Jesse? Counselor, a break, please. A break is break. requested. A break is granted. We will break for seven minutes. We're going to recess. Welcome back to the Northampton City Council meeting of September 5th, 2013. I'm City Council President Bill Dwight. We're just coming out of a very fun recess. Um, and now we're convening back. I would say probably about What are we calling the City Council meeting? Right. There you go. Okay. Up next, this is upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narco. It's ordered that the Council vote to rescind only the $535,000 of borrowing uh, authority authorized under the loan approved um, March 1st, 2012 for the purchase and acquisition of land easements or conservation restrictions for the property in Coles Meadow Road to expand <laughs> the uh, Broadbrook of the Cheryl Lake Greenway. Move to rescind. Second. Okay. Any further discussions to discuss in finance? Nope. Uh, this is a roll call. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Daniels? Aye. Yes. Yes. Aye. Yes. Aye. Now this is a the financial order that was also discussed, the authorization of payment of FY 2013 bills from FY 2014 departmental budgets, and there's a request for two meetings. This is upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narco with an order that the council authorize payment of two prior fiscal year bills, FY 13. 
Eric's Computer Consulting, <laughs> the amount of $352 for the assessor's office. And then Franklin Regional Council of Governments, in the amount of $1,000, that's the mayor's office. Both bills to be paid using FY14 OM budgets in these two departments. So to approve. Any further discussion on this? All those in favor? Aye. Roll call. Roll call. Roll call. Oh, roll call. Roll call. Well, we're spending Orders. money. Yeah. Yeah, we're spending money. I'm sorry. Roll call on this. Yes. Aye. Yes. 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 Is there a motion? Second rule. Second. Oh, motion to suspend rules. Second. Right. Thank you. Motion to suspend rules. Two reading rules. Fourteen. Rule fourteen. All those in favor of suspending rules, please say aye. 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 Move second reading. Move to approve. Second. Made several times. <laughs> once. Uh, roll call. Uh, um, any further discussion? Roll call. Aye. Yes. Yes. Aye. 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 Yes. Yes. All right. This is the financial order. This is the authorization to enter into the intermunicipal agreement with Franklin Regional Council of Governments. It has now been mentioned that no two readings be done tonight. Not a recommendation at this point. Although Move it will still be interesting. Second. Any further discussion on this? Councilor Freeman Daniels. Yeah, I, I have a few things on this. Um, really, the, it's small, but um, I would appreciate intermunicipal agreements not be, uh, at least be introduced, be, not be called financial orders. I would imagine I can be fine to have them start in finance, but I, I'm not really sure why they're financial orders. If they are, if there's a good reason for them being financial orders, that's fine, but I think they should be introduced in council level. I also agree that uh, we really do, we should be thinking regionally, and uh, that um, arguably uh, most of the uh, towns surrounding Northampton have a lower tax r rate than we do. Uh, so our competitive advantage is um, lost to those towns. So I, I would say we're actually protected by entering into this, these agreements um, if, if a business is looking for a lower tax base. I mean, we have other things to attract a business in Northampton compared to uh, other towns and cities in Franklin County, in, in Hampshire County, but uh, because our tax rate is higher than uh, many towns in the surrounding area, including Hatfield. Uh, I think that we are probably better served by being in this regional uh, council of governments. Any other discussion, Councilor Tacey? We also have to recognize too that we have a the factor of only of a single tax rate. We don't differentiate between mm -hmm. commercial and residential. Mm -hmm. Just want to throw that out there too, and uh, well, to add, add into that. I, I intend to support <laughs> this in this reading. Um, I don't intend to throw the block out there for minority reconsideration for additional information because the mayor has said that he is going to send us a link to 120 pages of information, which I appreciate that he's already found for us, he's and I'll do that yeah. it right now. So yeah. I want to thank the mayor very much for his diligence. Oh, yes, yeah, there you go. Um, so, thank you. I, and I also add to the fact that um, not only the tax differential, and I, I, I take Councilor Freeman Daniel's point is actually quite good. We, I think we, we gain a lot more than we lose on this particular agreement because we also have, we do not have a surfeit of property that would appeal to larger scale industrial development and retaining the industries that we have uh, if if, enough, if surrounding communities with more open land were to make aggressive pitches, uh, we might not win that battle. And I, I, I think that's, I think because it's reciprocal, that we actually enjoy better protections. Uh, it, it serves us better than it does, say, uh, other communities. So, Your opinion is duly noted. Thank you. Um, roll call. Roll call. Councilor Yes. 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 Aye. Yes. Yes. Aye. Okay, now we'll come back in two weeks. Not two weeks, right. Right? Yeah. Next council meeting is in two weeks at home. The 15th.
19th, sorry. I'll be here on the 15th waiting for you all. Um, this is upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narkowitz ordered that a budgetary transfer of the amount of $8,661 be made from the FY 2014 Reserve for Personnel uh, to the FY 2014 Board of Health Permanent Salaries. Move to approve. Second. Second it. Any further discussion? Yes. 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 Aye. Yes. Yes. Aye. Yes. This next one also comes with a request for two readings. This is um, the city, as and for the reasons that Council Murphy had mentioned, this is the City Council engaging the services of Scanlon Associates for the FY 2014 audit and associated reports. And the reason, of course, is the deadline by charter is uh, September 15th. And as Mary just noted, we meet on the 19th. So that's no to approve. Second. Any further discussion on this? Uh, yeah, just, I want to say that I agree with Councillor Adams that it would be very, probably beneficial to have a fresh set of eyes uh, to either reveal new things about uh, about the city that you know perhaps Scanlon's gotten used to or um, or to find out how much how, how great Scanlon was and you know it's, none of the contracts are would be long term so um, any further discussion uh, roll call yes 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 Yes. Yes. Aye. Yes. Aye. Move to suspend. Move to suspend rule. rule. Suspend rule 14. Second. Wow. Okay. Several several motions for, to suspend the rules. All those in favor of suspending rules? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Move to approve. So Second. Second. Uh, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Aye. Yes. 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 This is first reading uh, authorization to purchase or acquire or exp to expand, not expend, Broadbrook Greenway. Um, uh, Council Murphy read this in finance. You need another reading. Please waive the reading. Waive the reading. Second. Consider it done. I'll accept the motion. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Ooh, bada boom. Take it away. Yes. 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 Aye. Yes. 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 Next up, uh, first reading authorization to purchase or acquire land owned by Marsha Russell. And again, a wave reading. Please. Okay. Move to approve. Second. Right. Motion's made. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Yes. Yes. Aye. Yes. 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 Next up is second reading. This is the authorization to accept the land adjacent to King Street. You want me to reread it? Does everyone remember this? Yes. Wave reading, please. Wave reading. Okay. So I'll accept a motion. So moved. Second. second it. Any further discussion? Mary? Yes. Aye. Yes. 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 Next up, uh, financial order. It's, of course, an authorization to purchase land to add to the Sawmill Hills Conservation Area. This is second reading. Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? Okay, Mary. Back to me again. Yeah, I. I was first last. Time. On a roll. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> Mary's going to be doing most of. The, she's doing all the work tonight. Fix that. <laughs> it was so. Yeah. Um, all right. This is an order proposed uh, November fifth, twenty thirteen ballot question. <coughs> <laughs> Ray, removal of snow and ice from private ways open to public use. Um, 
ordered that at the regular municipal election be held in November on November 5th, in Northampton on November, 20, uh, November 5th, 2013, that the following question be placed on the ballot pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 40, Section 6D. Shall the city vote to accept the provisions of Section 6C of Chapter 40 to the general laws of the general laws, which authorize the cities and towns to appropriate money for the removal of snow and ice from private ways therein open to public use? Move to approve. Second. For purposes of discussion. Uh, for purposes of discussion. And who Second, would like to leave because I actually wanted to be approved, so. Okay. <laughs> Noted. Uh, Councilor Adams, did you want to lead the discussion on this? Sure. Um, I, I first drafted this, and um, the Board of Public Works and City Council Commerce Committee reviewed it um, and had a discussion. And the Board of Public Works submitted to us a memorandum weighing the pros and cons of the ballot issue. And after the discussion, it seemed to me in, in the committee, because the committee unanimously recommended to send it forward with a ne negative recommendation, um, that this may not be a good idea. And the reason why, two reasons really, primarily, one is that the ballot question only deals with snow and, light, uh, snow and ice, um, snow removal. And it, it, it can't, by law, deal with um, anything else. It can, it, it's very limited what the language um, says, and that's pres prescribed by state law. And um, so one important thing is that it doesn't address infrastructure issues and easement issues and other things related to, to those things. It only addresses snow and ice removal. Further, um, if it fails, it would leave people who, who've, who've relied on the service and who've paid taxes and have expected that service throughout the years in a really bad position in this upcoming winter because it would be illegal for us to do the snow removal at that point. And further, there's a process by which the Board of Public Works is going through street by street and making an analysis and determining whether or not they think that based on a set of criteria that they've developed, these streets should be taken for um, taken as public public ways or not and so i think we should just simply defer to that process entirely and um go ahead and and um and vote this down or table it indef indefinitely and um and that's my reasoning based based on that thank you I, just for purpose of framing this for the public to understand that it essentially as you, so many of you know, that historically, well, because there's been legal challenge, that the city of Northampton has historically plowed private cities in ways that have not been accepted as city streets, and consequently, there is a liability <coughs> there, and uh, the there's two ways of circumventing that liability. One is this ballot question, which authorizes the city to plow any, well, they would already plow city streets, but in private ways. Uh, and then the, the other option is the option that the Board of Public Works is currently exploring, which is reviewing who qualifies for public and private ways. Uh, Councilor Freeman Daniels and Councilor Smith. And uh, the beauty is that we can have both. We can uh, ask the voters of Northampton how they feel on this issue of, uh, of allocating public funds for private ways. And um, we can determine whether we can uh, uh, plowing private ways that are open to the public is legal in Northampton or will remain illegal in Northampton. And we can still have the Board of Public Works, and we in fact will continue to have the Board of Public Works go through the process of accepting some public streets and not, uh, some streets as public and not accepting others as, and leaving them as private ways. I can't I support this because for, for a number of reasons. The first is that it's democratic. We, by, but if we were to table this or to vote it down, this is the city council telling the voters of Northampton that we do not want their opinion. Uh, in fact, a state sanctioned, uh, they, they, could, they could participate in a state sanctioned vote about how the city spends some of its money and the council does not want their opinion the council does not want to hear from the voters in northampton about how it should be spending its money in fact what's been going on prior to this uh question 
is that the council has, has uh, and, and the city has been illegally breaking the law, illegally plowing <coughs> private ways. And now we have an opportunity to ask the voters in Northampton whether they wish uh, the city to continue to, um, they wish the city to stop breaking the law or to um, come in compliance with the law with, um, their, uh, with, with their majority vote. So to table this or to, to kill it would essentially be anti-democratic. It would be telling the voters, we do not want your opinion and will either continue to break the law, which is what we would, the city would do if we were to continue to plow these private ways this winter, or we, we, we don't need to know that you want us to plow these private ways because we're not going to. And that's not fair both ways. It's not fair to the voters, and it's not fair to the people who live on private ways. It's just not fair not to let this issue be heard by the voters in November. Um, Councilor Speck, you're just queuing up for a response. I just yeah, want to note. Yeah, queuing up. Um, just, just a second. I just want this would require two readings because yes. of the deadline okay. for the due yeah, to get this out, just so everyone so understands that. So just a couple of things. One, the there are things that are passed that people do, cities do, that are illegal. You're, there was kind of dire music playing in the background. I just want to tell you we are among scores of cities and towns who are in practice doing the same thing. We are actually trying to be responsible and live up to what the ruling was a number of years ago. It took many communities totally by surprise. And no one is kind of coming down, the sheriff or the state posse or whoever's gonna come down. I think there's an understanding this has been a very difficult situation. One of the things I wanna make clear is that many of these streets that many of us consider public streets. We'd be surprised to know they were private. The reason they were not public streets is because of bureaucratic reasons. Many of these streets, that's, that's what has happened. So I just want to make sure we, we kind of tone it down a bit in terms of the illegality of what the city has done or is maybe currently doing if we had a snowstorm in two weeks and plowed some of these streets. Um, because it's been common practice throughout the Commonwealth in multiple communities. The second thing is this whole thing about the a democracy question. We, you know, we are not a town meeting form of government. And so the question is whether you have, we are a representative form of government. We've been elected to go through these issues. I've been involved in this for six years, and it keeps getting layers upon layers of complexity, as uh, my two colleagues will tell you, that <laughs> this is not an easy issue. And I feel like I was elected to spend the time that God knows most people don't want to spend looking into all the nuances of this. And so let me just give you one of them. If we, uh, in terms of, if this were to re be rejected and we don't soon approve of these streets as public ways, those that we're going to, we would lose Chapter 90 money. So that's a, one issue that gets complicated here. Um, in addition, as Councillor Adams pointed out, would it really be fair if we were to go ahead and vote on this in November and say no, we would then be at a point where I would agree with you, I would feel uncomfortable at that point to go ahead and plow streets, many of whom, again, I'm, you'd be surprised, you'd consider a private street just like the street you live on, but we would not be plowing them this winter and we would have a difficult time doing that. I think the process in place is a fair process. I think we're a representative body. I think we've been elected to look at these issues and it has been a long time that we've been looking at this and trying to work out the best solution possible. Finally, it was Councillor Adams and I and Councillor Tacey, the reason we even brought this forward, I just wanna make sure, the reason we initially brought it forward and wanted to put it on the ballot was actually because we wanted to get more information. So in a way it was a little bit of saying, if you at DPW and other places don't give us the data we need and we're trying to move them along, then we're gonna go ahead and put this on the ballot because we need to see some of the hard evidence of how much is it gonna to cost to make the 40 or so streets public ways, what is the cost for that, what's the money we would lose in, in Chapter 90 money, and a whole bunch of other complex issues. 
And in fact, once we said we're going to go ahead and move this forward, that information was forthcoming. We were able to look at the process that the BPW has put in place, and we think it's those of us on the Joint Committee think it's, a, it's an excellent process. Uh, Council Casey. Yeah. <clears throat> and this, is, this isn't something that we take very lightly either. Um, whether it's bureaucratic or whether it's just oversight, many of these streets were just oversights that just were not, they did not finish the process out for construction. Hillcrest Drive was an oversight. It was just, who the heck ever thought that was a private way? It was never accepted by the city. Christ, it connects Sheffield Lane to Bridge Road. There's 15, 20 houses on there. Mm -hmm. it, and it, it goes on and on and on. And I think we do want to hear from the public, but I don't think we're, I don't think we're there yet. We haven't figured out just exactly which ones were oversights or, or bureaucratic, bureaucratic uh, stone walls or roadblocks, but the criteria that's been set out, uh, as they approve some or, or want to approve some and not approve others, changes as they go through it because they find similarities into, and the King Avenue off of uh, Bardwell Street in Florence. We just spent maybe a half a million dollars on that road. We put a new water main in it, a new sewer main, new storm, we got we, new gravel, new blacktop. We built the street. The city of Northampton built the street. And I think they have an expectation of having their snow removed. I mean, it's a city street. No matter how you spell it, Warner Row and Leeds. I mean, these are cities that built by the city. So they have an expectation of having their road. And it amounts to less than the 40 private ways amounts to less than 2% of the entire snow and ice mm -hmm. budget in the city of Northampton. Mm -hmm. Less than 2%. And I'm not willing to let the people that live on those 40 streets, I'm not willing to hang them out to dry. They've paid taxes and they have an expectation of services. I could go on, but I won't. And we, this is not something that happened overnight. We have been working on this for a long, long time. Council Murphy and the Council mm -hmm. Just for the members of the Joint Committee, I know that this process has been ongoing and I think DPW has classified a good number of these streets. Is it reasonable to assume that before snow season begins, the bulk of these will come to us to either vote up or down so that we can reduce the total number of unaccepted streets? Mm -hmm. Are we going to start getting petitions back approved by DPW to do these in mass so this total number gets decreased dramatically before snow? And my assumption is yes. Well, they yes, but they are also going through each one that they've already gone through again and, and reanalyzing. Yeah. So I'm not exactly sure. Is it reasonable to assume that before I, I December think, we're going to get a bunch of these that they've run yes. the process yeah, on to say so. yes? Please, we recommend you take these and get them off the private way yes. list yep. think so. so that that number will be small. I, I agree, but at that point, the DPW is going to look again at the ones that they, they did not recommend That's the right. first time. So, in, after going through this for, for so many years, I'm not willing to say that in two months we'll have it knocked down to where we're just going to have six right. left. All right. Uh, but the, the, is next, so I, um, I don't want to, uh, I'm, I'm, I appear to be in the minority because it's right now it's three people who have spoken to, uh, to table this or, or to vote it down and only one who's spoken to, to actually let the voters uh, vote on it. But uh, what I said when I introduced my previous comments was that we can have both processes. We can do them both. In fact, we, this, is a, this is a process that works actually in parallel to the very reasonable process that the board is doing now. What this does is it clarifies, some, it clarifies whether the city will continue to break the law or not. And we can ratchet the language down, and I can say break the law really quietly. But last year, we decided that that was the last year we were going to break the law and plow private ways. Uh, and that this year, we would have the public, either the public acceptance or the rejections. We haven't had those yet. And it seems like it'll be, it seems as though it'll be another year where the um, city decides to break, to break the law and plow private, allocate funds for snow and ice, no matter how much it is, I don't know, 17, 16, 15,000 dollars. But it, this, what this would do was it, it would cl it, is it will clarify whether the voters want that sixteen, seventeen, or fifteen thousand dollars allocated to this purpose, 
And the the issue about the uh, expectation of of plowing and so on and so forth, if it, that is diagonal to what we're talking about here, it's it's not related. I also agree that people who that there are people who have an expectation that this that these streets should be plowed, uh, and there are some people who have a, the expectation, and the city will agree that those that these streets should be public. Some people have an expectation the city will disagree that they should be private. But the real issue here is when the city disagrees, will they break the will they then go ahead and plow it anyway? And we're asking the voters to ring in on that. This we can have both processes. We can do both things. All this will do is let the voters decide and let the voters ring in on this process. And I don't see why I, I don't see it's a false choice between the process that the board's doing now and this ballot question. You can have them both. We're, we're going to, we're in fact proceeding as though you can do them both. The only, the only difference is that if the ballot question fails, then everyone will know that when the city plows private streets in the winter that we're breaking the law instead of only a few people, those who watch the council meeting. I have, a, I have a question for Council Spector or Council or anyone on the in yeah. the committee. You, you said that if this fails, that there was, there will be a loss in Chapter 90 funds as a result. No, not if this fails. One of the, what this does, and, and I think this is a very confusing issue, which is why some issues. And if you read about California trying to change their law, where they have multiple okay. referendums, what you're nope. talking about is democracy by referendum. Some issues are extremely complex on referendum. And I don't blame people not wanting to go into all of the nitty gritty and stuff. I had someone today say, you know what, I don't even know what's going on in the city, but I'm going to vote for you because I trust what you're doing. Well, if he doesn't like what I'm doing, he can vote me out. But that's our job to look at these details, which we've done, as Councilor Tacey knows, for okay. years. And but so we're talking okay. about a broader philosophical okay. issue about so the democracy. broader philosophical. I, I just have the. Okay. I have two questions. Is I'm going to retain the floor if you okay. allow me. This particular referendum, the way as Councilor Adams said, we can only word it in a certain way. So if it were to be voted yes, that we'll spend money on private ways then they would not be public streets, we would not get the Chapter 90 money. At that point, we may also have people saying, wait a minute, we are, why are we doing a second process here? Well, that you brings know, why me are we also now making them public streets? We already said brings, we'll follow. brings me to my second question is, this is boilerplate, the language on this uh, ballot question. This ballot question, if I come to this cold, in no way indicates to me that I will be fine. Uh, it, it, the, actually, the the breadth or, or dimension or any aspect of this situation. I think it's part of the problem that you uh, have to be a campaign that's involved. But this question, as it reads, it shall the city vote to accept provisions of section six C of Chapter Forty of the General Laws, which authorizes cities and towns to appropriate money for the removal of snow and ice from private ways there, there and open to public use. I think a lot of people come to this question and go. Uh, don't we do that? I mean, why are we voting for that? And I and I don't think the informed democratic discussion will be realized. It would take some education that would fall on us, and I think that's appropriate. But I think, given this language, it's a different argument. I, I think the big question is, which are the streets that are private ways, and which are the streets that are not really private ways, for all intents and purposes. And so I think to put a question like that to the public when we don't, when we really don't know, in fact, the, the vast majority of those streets that have been considered private ways are being found to be, in fact, public ways. And the, the real threat is, as we've heard from people who've come before the council, is that they've existed for, you know, generations, some of them, on a street that has always been considered by them and the city to be a public way, but just for a bureaucratic reason or some other reason that was just never formally accepted. Now they'll not be have their street plowed because of this route. Not because, um, because it's erroneously considered a private way. And so I think to, to put this question out there, uh, it's too confusing right now. I, I wouldn't be opposed to putting the question out there when it's finally resolved and we have a clear understanding about which streets are private ways and which public, like five years from now, however long it takes, but to do it right now before, before the uh, snow falls and with the chance that we could not have streets plowed is not a wise idea. Councilor Murphy and then Councilor Adams. 
So I, I would like us to implore the DPW to get as many of these streets that they've run through process to us as possible before snow and ice season so that we can accept them and reduce the total number of affected streets that are not accepted to a minimum. So there's only a few of these and it reduces the cost to do them. And then if we choose to extend to the mayor the recently established presidential prerogative which laws to enforce and which ones not to enforce, that we're talking <laughs> about a limited number of streets and, and that the bulk of them have been run through process and accepted. Because I think the, the majority of them I think we've seen are going to get accepted. A, a small minority won't be, but that would at least get us as in conformance as we can be. And then and if they want to do more process on the remaining streets, fine, but we'll at least get most of them off the agenda. The learned counselor from Ward 3 keeps saying that we can have both processes, and that's true. But if you think about that, how that could play out practically, it, it, it could play out like this. Say you live on one of those streets, and 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 the Board of Public Works hasn't gotten to your street, and then the winter happens, and the, well, the vote the vote comes first. City votes no, and then the winter happens. They have to form an association for that winter if it gets done next year, and then that association disbands once the street actually is taken. If it does get taken, that's almost like toying with them, and it just it just puts them in a, in a, a tremendous position of, of inconvenience, and and I think hardship. So. And again, as Councillor Tacey pointed out, it's it's two percent of an eight hundred thousand dollar budget. Thank you, Councillor Tacey. And um, we're just not there yet. We have at the meetings, at the conference committee, and the board of public works, we are not there yet. We do. We work every single meeting that we have. We bring this up and we hit this at length. And as uh, Councillor Carney, to her point, is we are not there yet. In 1996, we accepted 61 cities, 61 streets in 1996, all at once, that weren't accepted, that were private ways, and we were plowing them. And so here we, we move along as we go. And this was a very complex issue for the Board of Public Works to handle, and I think they have done very, very well. They are on this constantly. So I, I give them great kudos for, for being diligent in this. But we're not at that point. We're very close. And as to, to Councillor Murphy, we push them at every meeting to whittle this down. And they got to a point where they had set criteria that fit some streets better than others, but other streets had more engineering done. They had more bound points. So everything continues to morph in this. And I, I give them all the credit in the world. They've been doing a great job on this, and they have moved forward by leaps and bounds here in the last six or so months. So we're just not quite there yet, but we are getting there. And um, I, I don't believe that we will be there before the first snowflake flies. Council of the Bar. Yes, um, I also want to thank the Board of Public Works. I, I think that they have done a tremendous job. Um, they are looking at these properties very carefully, engineering being involved, um, finding you know what property and their property lines and so forth. Everything takes time. Um, I don't agree with putting this on the ballot because of what the Board of Public Works is doing and they're taking street by street. And um, I, I just think that what is private and what is the difference here? And I think, and I'm hoping by before November we do get answers and I have to agree with Councilor Murphy on that, that hopefully that we can whittle it down to a little bit more the the only thing I, I would add to that is that um, you're right these are not mutually exclusive and that in, in fact actually if we allow the but I, I, I do take the recommendation of counselors who are suggesting that why this could be a ballot question at the next election that um, thereby allow once the public has a greater knowledge and understanding of what the circumstances are what the consequences are I, I think that it's incumbent upon us and the more uh, more precisely the BPW to come up with that proper inventory presented to the public, which is not none of that's included in this question. So there's is there an informed democratic decision, or is it um, something that you know could result in the consequences that would uh, actually subvert the best intentions that we all have here? So, so there is an election. This ballot question doesn't 
isn't eliminated forever in a day. It can be advanced later. So, just briefly, also just so we're all aware, um, this question can only be introduced in regular municipal elections. Right. So, so it would be two years from now would be the next time we could reconsider. It. And one last, sure. And there's a liability issue too. If we don't plow somebody's street, and how do they, public safety? How do you get emergency equipment? You know, just all of a sudden we just say no. And is there a liability? It, it just well, it's for the it's for the good of the, I think it's for the good of the community that we plow these this year. Even if we don't get all of this all of our ducks in a row this time, but at the next regularly scheduled municipal election, I am sure that we will have all of this together. Well, so, he, he, Council Freeman Daniels' point is there's a liability that exists currently, which is what this this came as a result. I think it was a Wellfleet. There was a suit uh, that was lost by the town of Wellfleet and. Um, thus opening this can of worms and making the rest of the Commonwealth aware of the circumstances of, of traditional uh, agreements. And there are lots of them. They're not on just private ways. We have lots of agreements that have no bearing in law and that the, it could, because we started several hundred years ago making this stuff up as we went along. But, but in context, it's up. Councilor Freeman Daniels and Councilor Murphy. I just, um, I want to, uh, to your point about an informed vote, um, I do agree that uh, the question as written is confusing, um, but uh, it's certainly not even close to too late for a campaign, especially for the proponents and the opponents. Um, there are people, there are, there are uh, people running for office that don't get their campaigns underway until September or October. And they believe that they can inform the public to, about their values and and, uh, and platform in that time. And I think the same could happen for this campaign, for for this for this ballot question, if there was sufficiently motivated groups uh, regarding it. I don't I, I, this I don't understand why we don't want to give the public a chance to weigh in on this. I this ballot question is offers a low cost alternative to the expensive. In fact, quite expensive process the board is going through now, which the board and the Department of Public Works could take if they wanted to, if in some circumstances they decided not to accept a public street, but the voters in their, we trusted the voters and in their wisdom they approved this. They could take, they could actually plow a private street legally and not accept it as a public way. This is a low cost alternative. This is exactly why the 2% allocation is, exa <laughs> is why we should put this on the ballot. The other, and the last, the second point is, if this is, so in other words, if this is voted up, this is a low cost alternative to the process the board is already doing, which I think is a good process. And if this is voted down, nothing changes. The city will continue to plow private ways and it will continue to do it illegally nothing changes if this is voted down other than the fact that now everyone will know that the city is breaking the law uh councillor murphy yes i, I did <coughs> and you're next i would move to table this issue indefinitely i'll second I, that second motions made there's no debate on tabling um roll call, call. Roll roll call. call. Oh, i'm sorry this is roll call Yes. Murphy? Yes. 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 Okay. The motion is tabled. Um, speaking of tabling, uh, the the uh, this is uh, an ordinance. This is to merge the historic district commission into the. Uh, the Burge Historic District Commission into the Historical Commission, as amended, was originally withdrawn back on June 6 by the City Solicitor for Revisions. Do um, you want to hear a reading? This um, one? No. Wave reading. I would wave reading? the reading, but okay. um, I would have a question for Mr. Fiden. Yeah, uh, and the still rec did we recognize we have yeah, yeah, we, we did. recognize Wayne in finance, though, so. And, uh, all those in favor of recognizing Wayne Fife. Aye. 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 Um, my question was, does this now conform with 40C? Yes. I think that was a question before was yep. Alan still didn't think it conformed, but it yes. now conforms. Yes. 
That's correct. And what changes were made in it to get it to conform from the last time we saw it? Uh, two basic changes. One is um, that three people have to be nominated by specific entities, the Star of Northampton, the Board of Realtors, and Western Mass AIA. Um, and the second is the membership is maximum of seven, even during the transition period. And what impact does this have on the historic commission, which is not typically more people in that? Is this a subgroup of that, or does the historic commission drop to seven members? Historic Commission won't have associate members, so they've only had seven members. So there have been vacancies for a while, so everyone on the Historic Commission can move over, and the people on the Elm Street Commission who want to move over can. And then the composition would be in accordance with 46. That's correct. So the delay, the reason this took so long from June, is we had to write those three boards and ask them to nominate. And fortunately, all three were willing to nominate people who already served. So that made it easy. That, that's what a lot. I mean, technically, people aren't moving over. Technically, they're being reappointed, but they're the same people. Um, this was supported unanimously by the Historic District Commission, the Historical Commission, and the Ordinance Committee. Any other discussion? Questions? Okay. Uh, roll call, please. Yes. 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 Aye. Yes. Yes. Aye. Yes. Uh, next up, and by the way, after this one, we get to the uh, zoning. If anyone's really getting numb, so the uh, but this is this is germane. This is going to <laughs> this is relating to a vote that we're going to have later tonight. We already missed the boat on this once. This is uh, upon the recommendation of Councilor Jesse Adams. Um, this is the the change rule 43. Uh, does everyone you want me to read this again, or is maybe just summarize it? Explain yeah. it. Summarize it. Actually, I'll, I'll defer third, to uh, Councilor Adams, the author. Sure. Um, basically, we just created a process where we can uh, approve where it's codified that we approve executive session minutes in executive session, and then when we come out, the council president will, annou will announce that they're released for the public. It avoids us that yeah. infinite loop that we're currently <laughs> trapped in. So that we have to vote. We have. To, we will be convening tonight for the last time dealing with minutes of minutes of minutes. So, um, would you call that housekeeping? Or would there's a motion to approve, and is there a second? Second. second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please aye. say aye. 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 Thank you. Now. Uh, before we start, uh, I'd ask the council to recognize uh, Carolyn Mish as well. Just before we get into this, move to recognize Carolyn Mish. Second. Second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 And so, would is anyone have an objection if I move the table of use and dimension changes to A, B, and C as a group, or does somebody want a single one? As a group. As a group. Is it okay? All right, then I move uh, item four, five, and six, table of use and dimensions changes that you are a b and c as a group all right that's all those in favor of moving them as a group please say aye aye aye, aye. aye. any objections i should probably ask okay come on folks we get it we get it come on all right this is in these are in second readings it's the table of use and, and table of dimensions for ura urb and urc carolyn the podium is yours um, I think from just a clarification from the last um, meeting there was um, on your first reading you wanted to um, get clarification about whether um, the introduction of a nine-month moratorium required a whole separate hearing process and the city solicitor has moved on that and um, uh, so the packet in front of you has, has the changes indicating that um, based on his recommendation they would incorporate the text into the language such that the special permit criteria for those units in A and um, B and C um, greater than seven units are special permit but that the provisions don't kick in for a date certain and he recommended a date certain rather than saying nine, nine months. months. Yeah. Any any questions, discussion? Uh, Councilor Freeman Daniels. 
Thank you. Um, I, uh, I mentioned this last time, and I just, I'm sure it's just a mistake, but again, under the design standards illustrated, it's just URC just does not look the same as URB. URB's got the extended uh, number two uh, for the uh, setbacks on front on doors and front doors and stuff. It's just, it's just like not coming, like the, the, um, the graphics just aren't, they should be the same as URB, I yeah. think, right? They're just not. They're just not showing up. At least they weren't in my package. So I, I think it must be just a problem, like a image imaging problem or something like that. Um, we can make that corrected for the um, for the for the actual um, when it gets sent off to. Should I make a motion that, that, the, that can I make a motion that uh, section two of design standards illustrated under URC be the same as URB? Well, I would second that well, motion. Uh, unless, unless they are, let's just yeah. confirm. Yeah. I think I don't think they're any different, frankly. Hold it. Uh, would it be the URC um, PDF? The setbacks are different between D and C to the side only, but in terms of the. Um, but it, it, is that any different under the design standards piece? Just the numbers, the call out numbers are different. Sketch notes. So the sketch should be the same. Okay. Well, actually, there was a motion made and seconded, actually. Um, yeah, but we don't want to. It seems safe to. to it seems safe problem. to go ahead and um, at least you know add this and say uh, if, if there is a mistake there, it's going to be changed. Yeah, I, I as well. You, you want to vote your preferences of vote on that? I don't understand. Is it yeah. just that the sketch does not reflect what the I numbers th are in the, in the so. language? Yeah. And but does the sketch actually show a figure for the? I, I mean, a, so. a numerical distance, and that numerical distance is correct? No. It, um, yeah, I guess this. No, because the because the rear setback is the same, right? It's the same twenty feet right. for both B and C. Right. And that's yeah. really what the what we're. Is it this sketch here? I see this that the side to C is 10 feet. Yeah. Right. So the sketch is different. And it's just not included. So we can't, we, I, I withdraw that motion. Okay. Yeah. Okay, the motion's withdrawn, but withdraw the recommendation is made. So we have to get that. that, that it's just a sketch. The language is, is the same. It's just the sketch okay. isn't sketch. But is the, ske with, is the sketch part of the uh, zoning ordinance? Is it, okay. So, so it, yeah. So the request is to have the sketch uh, reflect DNC the language. DNC document <laughs> or the sketch yeah. would be uh, the same or comparable. Conform with the language. Yeah. Conform with the language. The language. Exactly. With the setback difference, the scale is a little inaccurate. Mm -hmm. yeah, in fact, actually, <laughs> I think what's going on now that I look at it is, I think that uh, the URB sketch is is a UR, is the URC sketch. Because it shows a 10 foot setback, uh, side setback. Okay. Maybe it's your, maybe it's your pad. We'll make sure the graphics match the text. All right, thank you. Yeah, that's, yeah. Um, any, did you want to follow up or, or? I'll wait. Okay. Uh, Councilor Adams. If you could address the concerns of the gentleman from the Lyman Street, Rent Lyman Road neighborhood. And I think generally their concerns were, you know, um, is the city interested in that property? Could there be some alt, um, neighborhood altering development? And when and what projects would require a butter notification? Sure. So um, um, the we don't know what. Um, Smith's interests are in disposing of their property. They know they have for many years talked about um, um, shrinking the, the footprint of their campus so they're, they're concentrated more um, in the main academic quad area of the campus. And so they have talked to the neighborhoods and the, and the city over the years about potentially selling off parcels um, in the Lyman Road area. We don't know what that time frame is 
for them because it's been on the table for a number of years. Um, and it may continue to be on the table for a number of years. We've also talked to, had, and had public meetings with Smith about um, encouraging and they've committed to having neighborhood conversations uh, before they make any move to, in that direction, to dispose of property. Um, in terms of a butter notification, any kind of construction that's other than for a single family home that's more than 2,000 square feet uh, would require a minimum site plan approval and of course the zoning that you're looking at now introduces a new mechanism that is not on the table that is not in the current regulations which is special permit approval for construction of um, seven or more units so um, that a special permit also triggers um, public hearing um, notification requirements um, for abutters anytime you do a subdivision that also requires um, uh, subdivision meaning the creation of a new street network that might be um, considered in this context that requires public note. So any any units over ten in this case would then trigger that. Uh, well, it'd be less than that because there's any construction over two thousand square feet unless it's for a single family home um, would trigger site plan approval, which is public notice. Said one other thing too, just specifically in terms of alignment of state. So we we wrote to the vice president for finance about a year ago and invited them to be part in the process to engage the neighborhood discussions. Um, and they said they were happy to be part in the process. They asked us to put it off for a year because they're going through the transition of college presidents. So now there's a new president. We're going to re-engage that process. So we will have some meetings with them and the neighborhood to start master planning what options are out there. Thank you. My guess is when they sell the campus whatever portion they sell, whether it's all or some, the, the, the Lyman estate, they're going to sell it and it'll be up to a developer to go through the process. That They're not going to be developing it. But. So first, Smith has to decide that they actually want to part with it. And then anybody that goes in for any sizable development is going to show up at the planning board and the planning board's going to have their way with these people and the public's going to be involved in the conversation at the planning board. So this zoning change is not going to poof change that parcel in any way without plenty of process. Uh, Councilor Freeman Daniels and Jason, do you have a I just had a question. They've seated the president. No, no. Okay. Is that right? I'm sorry? They've seated a new president at the Yes. Uh, yeah. Or my only question. Yeah. I, uh, this actually, the estate is on the edge of Ward 3, and um, I, I was in part, part of conver the conversations that uh, Director Fyden had with the, uh, with the um, college. And um, it's, it's the, Lyman, the Lyman property, like many other parcels in the city, will be m uh, subject to more liberalized zoning when it comes to new, new buildings and development and so on. But um, the kind of... Uh, disruptive uh, changes that um, of you know of more than a dozen units would would first of all is subject to a moratorium until July 2014 uh, and um, and second once that moratorium expires if no no um, arrangements have been previously made uh, to uh, to amend the or to amend the current zoning um, a, a project that would be greater than 10 units would be subject to both the special permit and subdivision regulations as proposed by Councilor Adams, which is now included in this packet. Um, so a special permit, of course, leaves, leaves a lot of opportunity for neighborhood input and a butter notification. And the subdivision regulations are, um, are, are pretty, uh, pretty significant when it comes to some of the, uh, some of the um, infrastructure elements that, the, that, a, that a builder would have to add. Um, so I, I think that, uh, that Yes, it, there, it's it's possible. Just like the, the large the large parcels would become more more open to sale and more valuable, uh, and that um, people looking to uh, to divest of them or to uh, to make profit on them are going to be are going to be favored by this zoning. Um, but uh, I think for the large projects that uh, the gentlemen who were here before and some of the uh, individuals who showed up at the last ordinance meeting. Um, we're concerned with uh, that uh, largely they they don't have to worry yet. Uh, 
there's especially going to be, I understand, a conversation uh, with the planning board regarding larger projects and how those will be approved, and that's the reason for this moratorium. Uh, and, um, and I think that they should uh, stay tuned, but uh, that they shouldn't be too concerned with the passage of this package tonight. And about the package in general, I'm just going to echo what I said last time. I, I want to thank the uh, OPD and the planning board uh, and my fellow counselors for um, going through a lengthy process uh, of our own. Um, it was uh, it was the planning had it for quite some time, and it it all originated with the zoning revisions committee and with ultimately the sustainable Northampton plan. It looks different from uh, along each along the line it looks you know when you read the sustainable Hampton plan you might not have envisioned this package exactly and when you got the zoning rec revisions committee's report you might not have envisioned this package um, and the planning board certainly uh, didn't initially uh, give us a package that looked like this um, there weren't the, there weren't nearly the kind of design standards that uh, we now see before us so uh, it's been an it's been a process it's been an evolution um, this will significantly liberalize um, the zoning in the um, in the urban residential areas <laughs> of the city. Uh, I think in some places it could have gone farther. I think in other places it might have gone a little too far. Um, but uh, but but in the place where the I think the most outcry would have taken place, which are the larger projects, I'm satisfied that we have some uh, some restrictions and a moratorium on them. So I'm ready to approve this tonight. Yes, Thank you. Me too. Can I ask, uh, also mentioned tonight was the city's interest in, in acquiring the Lyman properties, and I, uh, I'd like to put that to rest if I could. <laughs> the, um, the, I'm not sure we would leverage the money to purchase the Lyman estate to develop what. I'm not sure, but there is. Uh, can you provide some assurance that the city has not got the money, or the resources, or the intention? Of purchasing that property um, no I mean there may be <laughs> I don't know how far down I'm trying to visualize how far down towards the meadows that parcel goes there may be portions of the property that make sense for con conservation that are fall right. into the floodplain but um, and and you know as we as with any large parcel and development opportunities arise we look at ways to work with applicants to, you know, um, potentially cluster certain development and protect others. So if there is a resource area that's part of that estate, then, but, but certainly not the entire. Right. I, I, I think the question was directed, suggesting the city was going to purchase and then develop it. Oh. And uh, the only circumstance in which the city would be involved with any portion of that property is to create a buffer or to preserve it in, in, into perpetuity open space right. just, so it's full disclosure we've had only two conversations at least from my office with Smith College about parcels we're interested in one is if some of you know that we worked uh, with the counselor about blocking off the access to Dyke Road from Pleasant Street right um, we were able to close off the edge of Dyke Road we couldn't formally discontinue the road because we needed butters permissions so we did approach Smith and say would you be willing to, to give us a strip of land in the floodplain along Dyke Road so we can discontinue. That's not developable land. It's just so we can get rid of a road and get it off our books. And then we also approached Smith as part of the overall neighborhood conversation about saying, is it possible to get a right of way? There's a, the old entrance to Lyman Estates is from Conn Street. And we asked, is it possible to get a walking right of way so the public could walk from, Con, from I'm sorry, from Fruit Street. The public could walk from Fruit Street up to Lyman. And Smith's answer was they want to wait till they redevelop the property. But those are the only two okay. things we've talked about. I think I think I think that probably addresses the the concern that was expressed. Um, I don't I don't think the the concern that the city I I I'm often startled to hear people think that the city has the resources to develop massive complexes. But it's Murphy. Yep. And I just like to thank the staff, the planning board, the zoning revisions committee, and everybody from the public that weighed in on this because this. This regulation or the zoning ordinance is almost 40 years old, and this renew this review is almost 20 years overdue, if not more yeah. than that. So, this is a substantial improvement on something that's sort of been a millstone around our necks for almost 40 years. So thank you to everybody that participated, and I, I don't think I've seen anything that's gotten more due process than this one has. So, I think I'm comfortable with supporting it at this point. Okay. 
Well, and the review has been almost 20 years. So, <laughs> so you, um, and I know that uh, Councilor Spector and I took advantage of the um, <clears throat> the garden tour. We got the OPD got a bus. Wayne drove. <laughs> Paul led us in musical numbers. Uh, oh. But it was actually particularly helpful because it, it we went visited neighborhood to neighborhood discussing impacts and and historical limitations and restrictions. And um, you you know you get a sense by looking at an overhead satellite map, but actually going in the neighborhoods and understanding juxtapositions uh, and the effect on the neighborhoods. And I think, and the reason I mention this is to go towards the the discussion of due diligence and the process. And we frequently hear at these discussions that we never talk about it enough. We don't. There's never enough public input. There's never enough review. The councilors are uh, um, absent a lot of very salient and important information. This will happen every time, particularly on something of this scale. This is a, a significant change, as Councilor Freeman Daniels noted. But it is. I, I mean, I don't think I can assure people that we have actually worked on this. We have participated. OPD has um, have been devoted to this, and the principal objective is to create and maintain sustainability and viability at the same time without having minimal impacts on people who actually want to live in this community who can't necessarily afford to live in this community. And I think if we're going to walk the walk, or at least talk the talk about being a diverse community. We're obliged to walk the walk as well. We've kicked this around on the council, but our input, our work has been minimal. The heavy lifting has all been done before it even got here. So thank you. Any further, uh, uh, Councilor Barch? Yes, Caroline. I want to thank the planning department. Um, Councilor Owen Freeman Daniels, um, of all the great concerns that there was from Ward 3, I think all the open public sessions, which actually there was communication that was brought forth for the residents to be able to come forth to say how they felt, what was needed. And um, I remember the sustainability with Fran Volkman and all of us other counselors who were involved with this planning. And um, I, I think this is the right way to go. Any other discussion? Council Freeman Daniels. Uh, can we shoot? I think we need to um, add uh, seven, item seven into this package. Am I right? It's the more than one structure. Per parcel. This is yeah, you yes, want yes. you want yes. item seven yeah. also Part included in this yes. package. Yeah. Um, I'll accept the motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. All those in favor of including that in this review. Aye. 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 Thank you, Carol. Any further discussion? Nope. Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Aye. Yes. Yes. Okay, so that's four, five, six, and seven. Can we do eight and nine as a group? You want eight and nine as a group? No, please. No? No, you want to separate it. All right, we'll do, uh, why don't we go back up? Uh, let's, no, okay, yeah, so we'll start with eight. Um, this is to amend 350C attachment use and dimensional regulation of central business district. This is a second reading. Accept approval? Second. Um, discussion? Council Freeman Daniels? Yeah, I, um, this, is, this is the residential uh, um, uh, usage in central business, which uh, after a discussion at the last council meeting, I was, um, I was sort of surprised uh, by the uh, understanding of what a public way is. Uh, I know that's kind of rudimentary for a city councilor, but uh, that was, uh, I guess that's why I'm getting out of this business. But uh, it, it, didn't, it doesn't include a park. And um, I feel that, uh, it, that, it should, that this, um, that this uh, ordinance should also preclude uh, residential on the ground floor when a, when a property abuts a park. So I have an amendment that I'd like to offer. I'm going to pass it around. And, but it, it's it 
the council might want to take a, take two weeks to study this uh, amendment in, in in earnest. So we could we could uh, we could table this till till the second meeting in September. It, um, council, can I just comment on the tabling? First of all, I want to thank you. You at times you know that you and I butt heads over your due diligence, but on on these pieces, I've been really thankful for your additions. And I think you did bring this up last time um, in our discussion. So um, I feel ready to even vote on this tonight because you brought it up. Um, we and we have had other discussions about just recently, and Edward and businesses have come forward. So I'd be ready to move forward and support this amendment this evening because I think it is a good one. I was surprised too about the whole park and public way issue. So. I, I'd be happy to table it, but if other counselors are, are willing to and feel ready to vote on it, I, I would be happier well, to go in that direction. Okay, we have a motion to table, but no second. Second. So, there was a second. Now there's no debate. All of those in, uh, roll call. Roll call. Roll call. Somebody called. We did. We're uh, tabling. Table. There's the next motion to the amendment. There's a. This is to table the amendment. Oh, I actually table the whole, table table the whole the, thing. Table the whole table thing. And it could come back as amended. Okay. Right. Want, so he this will be out. table the whole thing. Okay. And there's a roll call request. And so, I don't understand you, it. Would you want to, uh, with this tabling, refer it to the next ordinance committee okay. meeting where we could vet this and send it back? Because it's, oh, it's, yeah. it's too late. Yeah. Oh, so we're just, late. we're just going to do the vote. Right. Survive the table to. vote. So okay. So this is the vote on the table. Tabling to what? This is to the next, next meeting. meeting. Next meeting. Are you tabling yeah. the order? I mean, yes. The order. Yeah. The yes. order. Yes. The, ordinance with the amendment, no, the amendment the, hasn't the, been offered. We haven't got the amendment yet. So the ordinance. It was just handed out. It wasn't offered. Chase. Yes. 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 Oh. No. Yes. 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 No. Okay. This table. This is number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Makes sense. Uh, this is to amend uh, 350 3, to 350A, uh, increase height limits in general business district. This is the second meeting. Second. Any discussion on this? All right. Roll call. Yes. Yes. Abstain. Yeah. Aye. Yes. I better abstain. I own property in the zone. <laughs> yes. Aye. Okay. So pass. Six. This is um, a second reading parking prohibited at all times on Belmont Avenue. Second. Second. Yeah. Any further discussion? No. Uh, I'm sorry. No. No. Second Jim reading. Daniels? Just, just a reminder for the counselors: it's not eliminating a parking space. Just, it's actually just moving the sign. Moving the sign over. Okay. Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Aye. Yes. 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 Um, is there a recommendation moves? Next two is a group. Is a Next group? three. Okay. I'm yeah, sorry, there's three. Next 11, 12, and 13. Yep. Well. All right. 11, 12, and 13 to be moved as a group. This is the mobile this food along with enforcement. It's enforcement of mobile food. Okay. Yep. Right. This is, so this is the, uh, this is the mayor was kind of hoping we wouldn't have to sit around for He's here. And he's here. And Chad's still here. This is uh, the list of enforcing officers and penalties for non-criminal uh, disposition. Police. 
this is a list of enforcing officers and penalties for non criminal disposition the city engineer and then the 13th is the mobile crew vehicles uh, regulations or the mfvs Yes. And these are as a group, right? Mm -hmm. As like a group. Uh, so it's uh, moved and seconded. Uh, discussion, please. Uh, Councilor Adams. Um, question for the mayor. W would you prefer if this was voted on tonight? I'm just curious because the gentleman in public comment gave us not just, he gave us a good deal of information, including not only opinions, but he cited studies and, and just looks like there's a, a good amount of information here and I'm wondering if it's important that we vote on it tonight for some reason or if we could if it if maybe the council would consider more time to consider what we've gotten here I think I said I, I uh, when I brought this forward um, I there is a lot of information out there and there's been some discussion already uh, that's been generated by just this process of, of trying to put the ordinance together our goal or my goal was to codify what is our current practices in an ordinance um, but but I'm clearly open to a discussion going forward about if people want to look at this as a larger as a policy issue talk with downtown folks uh, you know I know the discussion about pods has been mentioned these are all ideas but I was faced with the city solicitor telling me we've got a regulation here a regulation there you know something here something there it really should be what what's happening now should be codified in an ordinance form so that's why I put the ordinance forward um, so uh, I would be I think if you want to delay it for two weeks but I but I think it would make more sense to me to to if you want to make larger changes or do things that could be you could immediately start from when this goes into effect to start working on uh, looking at ways to modify or, to, or expand it. Um, that's just that's my recommendation, but and that's why I brought this forward. Um, um, yeah, I, I haven't had a chance to look at it, so it could. I mean, there could be only. I mean, there could be points in here that we've already discussed. It may not be nothing new, anything new. For, that for all I know, it just seems that there's a lot of information. I don't know if the council wants to continue it. I don't. I don't. You know, I'll just ask generally if people want to weigh in on that. I'm not going to make the motion. Um, I'll, I'll vote on it tonight. Councilor Freeman, Daniels, Councilor Murphy, then Councilor Tacey. I agree with the mayor, um, and and in fact, that my reason for voting on it is for voting for it last time and this time are are the mayor's are the same reasons the mayor has for proposing it. Um, I don't think that. Uh, this is the last word that we should have on mobile food food vehicles uh mfes and uh and i, I also think that um that to, to uh, make a uh make a decision regarding their use in the central business district where we have uh we have a arguably the gem of of the city uh in a entertainment um hospitality and, and retail area is a is a mistake to to do now or in two weeks uh, I think we have to have a longer process and a longer conversation that will involve the cha possibly the Chamber of Commerce the business improvement district um, with that will review this in a, in a committee of perhaps or something like that I mean we I think that um, what we're doing here with this vote is codifying the practice that actually the practice was worse than, than what we're what we're actually codifying. The practice was you can't do mobile food anywhere. Right. So this is actually slightly better, uh, and it could be that in the future we want to make it even more liberal. Um, but uh, I think that uh, we should, uh, and I agree um, that with the gentleman with many of the points that the gentleman made earlier today. In fact, I really appreciate the fact that he came forward. And he did say, even if you do pass it, please try to revisit it shortly and I think that that's something that this council should do uh, but until but really what we, we need to do is have some have actual laws that back up our practice and I think that's what a vote is for tonight. And I'm just going to concur I do support taking action on this tonight and getting this in the ordinance form but that I would totally support us taking the time to look at it overall putting some effort into it and seeing how we may want to change it in the future so I'll vote yes on this tonight. I agree. I, I intend to support this tonight, and I would like to take some action on it tonight. We could do things such as we've done with home occupation. After you get your permit, 
one year you review, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, when you see what you can change. That, that, we wrote that into the home occupation ordinance, and I don't see, um, you know, why we, we, why we can't handle this the same way, and I intend to support this tonight. But I did get to read this, and this, this is, these are snapshots um, in different cities and towns across the nation. But uh, I'm interested in what works here in Northampton as opposed to there's a lot of Seattle and Los Angeles and things such as that here, which is all it's all relevant. But um, I, I intend to support uh, this this evening. Council of the Barge and Council. Yes, Rath. I am, um, intend to support this 100 percent. And I think by holding this back would be the wrong direction to go into. I do agree with what I just heard Councilor Casey state in doing this in a year looking at it very very thoroughly and probably at that point we're going to be able to tell if we need to do changes or not i do appreciate what this ordinance these ordinances do um i've thought about this a good amount and um it allows them to it's codified it allows them to actually be here and, and, and mobile food vehicles can um, do their business here but also i do think it's important to, to protect some of the the restaurants particularly downtown because um if you look there's there have been you know, for example several restaurants have left in, in recent memory uh, eclipse grub spletto they're still around but they downsized and moved and i think that this is a good balance because it allows mobile food trucks to be in the city but it does protect the the restaurants downtown in florence somewhat so i support this thank you i would ask that we consider moving proactively on this because I actually do I agree and I had said this before the last council meeting I think this is a good thing yeah. I understand the resistance and the concerns and everything else but <clears throat> actually to uh, Mr. Bottoms point that these are incubation systems and Northampton actually is our downtown transitions as the internet has an impact on bricks and mortar store one thing that you can't do online just yet is eat and drink. And uh, the fact is, is that Northampton's Virgin restaurant scene is very good and it informs how successful we are within the region. Um, and I, anything that we can do to promote that, and certainly not to threaten it, but I think that there, I absolutely agree that people who would make Northampton a destination point if there were a a greater and broader variety in food options, particularly at lunchtime with food trucks and function, or after hours. These are these are great opportunities not to be feared, and I hope that we pursue it in consultation with all the existing businesses and people who are considering this, as opposed to just saying, wait until we'll modify the law next time we bump up to a problem. Rather than be reactive, but be proactive. So I'm so. I, I agree, and maybe um, it seems to me appropriate, perhaps for Edlu, and maybe it should be on the Edlu agenda for discussion, and and maybe this can be given yeah. out. Well, we all have it now, brought to Edlu, and, and actually, so to be proactive about it. Uh, any other discussion on this? Um, all right, uh, roll call, please. Yes. Hi. Yes. 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 Did, did you say Chad was going into the mobile food business? Not Chad. I don't think so. No? He's, he's yeah, selling hot dogs out of his pocket. Oh. <laughs> Outside the council. Hey, hey, hey. Outside the council. Uh, the, um, let's, let's move it along. We have the last two, 14 and 15 for referring. Yeah, I refer to the group. To refer to ordinances. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is uh, right back, parking yeah, prohibition right all back. times on Bates Street and parking prohibition all times on Meadow Street. <laughs> it's moved move to seconded. Approve. No, it's no, moved referring. Referring. Oh, referring. referring. Move to refer. Excuse me. Move to refer. I got my thumb over it. <laughs> Second. It's your hot dog. Any discussion on the referral? <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Updates from me? No. Any updates from committee chairs? Yes. Uh, from the T Transportation Parking Commission, uh, we've had a, a resignation from the Parking Committee, and uh, the Parking Committee is finally is getting some stuff to really sink its teeth into. I proposed a parking reform package, so the Parking Committee needs another member, preferably someone from the downtown business community, but uh, anyone's welcome to apply, and um, we're looking for another member. 
Mr. Tacey? And if you happen to be driving down Bridge Road by JFK, check out the new signage for the school. Yeah. Sorry. Um, and the four-way stop. Also, there are, mm. we yeah. also have, thank you to the mayor for the paddles. paddles. Yes. Two paddles at JFK. Two paddles at JFK. Thank you. For what? For bad students. <laughs> yeah, paddles for students. <laughs> oh, the, the Zabrowski Memorial paddles. There you go. They're actually quite, they're actually quite expensive. <laughs> I'm, I'm wired. It's appropriate. Right. The bunch of that. Close it up here. There's uh, an op <laughs> Does anyone have any information requests of the. That one. Does anyone have any information requests? No. Do business? All right. Move adjourn. Up. Executive session. Hang on a second while we're still in session. This is. Uh, this is the announcement of executive session and roll call vote to adjourn executive session. Executive session in accordance with section 26C. <laughs> And four yeah, of the Charter and the Mass General <laughs> Chapter 30A 2123 for the sole purpose to approve and release executive session minutes August 5th, 2013, August 15th, 2013, and September 5th, 2013, not to reconvene an open session. Um, okay. I'll call the roll for uh, to go into executive session. We're still on. Aye. Yes. 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 yes.